Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Player's Take, episode 167. I'm your host, Justin DiSimone, joined by my co-host, Elon Musk, now owns his Twitter account, Montreal Rice. Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing, man? Uh, how, are you, how are you feeling about Elon buying Twitter? Uh, it's another billionaire. You got your panties in a bunch like everybody else. Oh, God, I'm going <clears> to <throat> quit Twitter. Elon bought it. Ooh, like... I never really understood what was the issue with the guy, to be honest with you. I fucking no, dude. That's just... I know he's like, he talks a lot of shit. That's pretty much it. But like, just like every other Twitter person. So, I yeah. don't know. I, I didn't like Jack as the, the CEO. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, I really don't care. I don't think anything's going to change, to be honest with you. Same. I think people are just like, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, I uh, from the Elon Musk haters to the Elon Musk fanboys, like yeah. the, both sides are weird about it. I, I I totally agree. I don't I don't find anything particularly interesting about the dude, but nor do I find anything particularly like hyper offensive about him either. So I don't care either. I just kind of hope he burns Twitter to the ground and there's no more Twitter. That would that's my hope, but it's not gonna happen. That's that's not gonna happen. You don't buy something for forty four billion dollars to kill it. So you know. Yeah. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, Montreal. Otherwise, how how's life treating you, man? How are you doing this week? So, sorry, my mic was on mute. Uh, it's been a pretty uh, busy week. So, I don't know. I've been um, I've just been playing like my games and stuff like that, or I've been playing one game, mm-hmm. and um, I've been switching off between those two games and I'm just trying to take this week slow because I'm. Moving next month, so mm-hmm. um, just trying to save money and get ready for that move and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, okay. You moving closer to your job? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know you're making a fucking not nonsense, like crazy person drive right now. So, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, that's good. Yeah, uh, life for me is uh, fucking work and work, and I come home and watch a, a couple episodes of Breaking Bad, and I get on lost ark for an hour and then i go to bed it's been a great week or two so um all right everybody let's uh let's jump into it so for those of you who haven't listened before this is our weekly show where we talk about video games video game news and other topics pertaining to video games we post at 6 a.m central time on fridays on apple podcast google podcast spotify stitcher any favorite podcast app of choice and if you'd like to send us questions that we will read and answer on the show, you can send them to theplayerstake01 at gmail.com or at theplayerstake on Twitter, and we will answer them on the show. Let us start, like always, with what we've been <coughs> playing. And uh, Montreal, I will go first this week. All so, right, cool. <clears throat> like I said, work's been kind of kicking my ass uh, the past week or two, and I have I- I've been gaming, but it's like, just lo- it's mostly it's literally all pretty much exclusively lost art because I get home and I'm like, <clears throat> I'm like, man, I really want to play horizon. I got to play through. This- I got to play this fucking game. But then I like watch an episode or two of breaking bad. And then I'm like, fucking my brain has melted by that point. And I'm just like, I can't even think about horizon. I just want to get on something that's brainless and like, I don't have to think about. And then at this point that's lost art for me right now. <laughs> so um yeah i've really been playing that game mostly and um it's just i'm just i'm just fucking like i I, like work has been killing me dude i'm like in this we're in this crunch right now because of some decisions that were made by the higher ups and and me and a couple of the other managers are having to fucking like do all sorts of crazy shit to make sure the company doesn't burn to the ground so uh, so yeah, I've been, I've been working my ass off and it's, it's really draining me to the point that I, I don't even want to game when I get home for the most part. So I haven't been gaming much, so that's pretty much all I have. Montreal, what have you been playing? Um, so, <clears throat> oh, um, actually I do have something there. Uh, I'll talk about my other two games first. So a uh, stranger in paradise, I kind of put it down to the side cause I didn't want to get too ahead. Well, and, so uh, yeah. I, I, sidebar: I do, I do apologize <laughs> to you about this. Um, I did not intend to sit on this game for so long, but it's just like, like I said, I'm, oh, yeah. I've been so fucking tired. I can't even think about yeah, playing most, most games right now. So, yeah, I understand. So I kind of put it to the side right now. 
Um, so I've been playing Xenoblade 2. And then I forgot I had a credit on my account uh, <clears throat> for my birthday because um, Tiara got me a gift card. And I didn't, um, I, I used half of it to buy Pokemon, which I still didn't play. And I'm not probably not going to play it. And then um, uh, I have like another $30 on there. So I bought Astro Train because I really wanted to play this game. And um, let me tell you the adventure, though. I had, it wasn't a bad adventure, but I forgot my password. I forgot some time ago I, I changed my Nintendo ID password. And yeah, this is for everyone who's using Google Authenticator. Mm. Switch to another Authenticator app mm. ASAP. The reason I say that is if because if you lose your phone, I broke my phone. I had to get a replacement phone because I was out in the field, oh, saw shit. two stories, and it broke. Boom. So I had to get a replacement field, uh, replacement phone. And once I got my replacement phone, I replaced everything. The Apple transfer does a really good job at transferring everything over, right? It transfers all your apps, all your mm-hmm. stuff. It's almost like you never replaced your phone at all, to be yeah. honest with you. It's yeah. really good. It's very, it's um, actually really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I did all that, but the Google Authenticator is tied to the device. It's not tied to your your Gmail at all. So when I loaded up my, I haven't loaded up my Google Authenticator since God knows when. So I loaded it up because I had to re- uh, do my password for two like it's almost like a three factor authentication with the fucking Nintendo. Um so the first thing is if you make your when you make your account, please save the little 10 digit numbers they give you at the beginning of your account for Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Save it somewhere, put it in the folder, put it on a Google Drive or something like that where put you it won't in your forget last it. Pass. Yeah, put in your last pass. Um because the one I had, I think, either expired. I don't know how it expired. I have a 10-digit passcode, but I do not know what the 10-digit passcode is. So uh, I try to put all 10 of those digits or all 10 of those sets in there, and none of those work. So um, <clears throat> they're like, oh, well, you can send it to your authenticator app or whatever. Problem is, my authenticator app uh, was tied to my old phone. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't transfer all the Nintendo accounts because I had I had a Nintendo account on there and I had my Blizzard account on there mm-hmm. for the authenticator. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't transfer them over because they're not tied to my Gmail to tied to your device. Uh, so it was sending it and, it and obviously I wasn't getting it. So I had to call Nintendo. And thankfully, the person I had, she sounded like she was like American. I don't fucking know. She's pretty really good at English. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we were. She walked me through some things. She asked me some questions. And um, in about twenty minutes, I got my account back open, and we reset the password, and that was that. Mm-hmm. Um, it could have been a lot worse though. If I hadn't keep my emails, I was thinking about cleaning out my emails too. Now, mm-hmm. and I'm so glad I didn't. Um, because she was gonna, she asked for like an ID or whatever from like an old old email, and she'll give you a date. You go to that date, and then you give her that ID or whatever just to verify who who you are. Mm-hmm. Um. What the fuck is going on outside? I'm sorry, somebody. Dude, like, I heard that. Donuts. I fucking heard. Yeah. What the fuck was that, dude? <laughs> you got like a fucking Sasquatch out there or some shit? What the fuck? Is... I think I think somebody's doing donuts outside. Dude, I fucking. Okay. Uh, I hope I hope that came through an audio, like to, to the fucking <laughs> listeners, dude. That sounded like a fucking Sasquatch, like yelping or something outside. Like that was all. <laughs> Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, I got all that settled and, um, but it could have been really bad. It could have been really bad for people who don't have that type of information or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So my advice to you guys is to use Authy, A-U-T-H-Y. Um, it ties to a certain profile on your account. I mean, it's tied to a profile instead of the actual device. And that's what I'm going to be using for my authenticator app through everything else. Um, Interesting. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, anyway, so I've been playing Astro Train, and this game is really fucking fun. The story is, uh, whatever, but the <laughs> yeah. game itself, it's, it's anime shit, like, oh, you know, you control these, story is, you're a police, you're a police officer, and the world is like, the world went to shit, um, like, a data corruption fucked up the world or whatever, and 
the last of humanity is on this little ark um that's in that's on earth and even the ark itself is getting corrupted so you know you're the police on that ark and you fight with these things called chimeras um uh, you fight these things called chimeras and then the ones that the police have there's a special task force force called neurons and they have uh these creatures called uh neurons or i'm sorry not neurons but they have they're called um legions Mm -hmm. legions are pretty much captured fucking chimeras uh so yeah you you fight with these chimeras or or you fight with these legions your legions fight the chimeras you control them they actually are computer like ai computer control you throw them out and they fight and then you do combos based off them and you can do various stuff Mm-hmm. And give them commands and stuff like that, and you can combo it. So it's very fun and very intuitive. Yeah. Uh, I didn't hear anything about this game when it first came out, yeah. and nobody talked about this game. Like no one was putting videos up. Like yeah. no one was putting combo videos up. Mm-hmm. I went online and I found tons of combo videos, and like the shit that you can do in this game, I can do it. It's fucking amazing. Like all the little combinations you can do with your uh with your legions. You can have you can throw out two at a time. Mm-hmm. And um, so I I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a really fun game. I did look up some information on it. Uh, it looks like as of March twenty twenty, it did it did sell over a million, which is like really? I guess one of what yeah, which is which is platinum, which is uh really good for platinum because I think they haven't sold one like this since Bayonetta, like Near. a original oh. IP. Oh, an original game. Okay. Yeah, original IP from straight from the Platinum Games themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but the problem is, I don't know if we're going to get a sequel to this game at all. Um, so I would doubt that's it. a bummer. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so this game, um, <laughs> I've had this game on my Amazon wish list for since it came out, and um, I never, I've never dived in, dove into it because it, it, I don't, I just, I don't know, I've not found the time for it, but. I felt I have the same impression of it you do. Like I remember it came out, it had a bu- it had buzz for like a couple days and then I've never heard about this game again like since. And and it but I've I've like looked into it though. The people that have played it all rate it very 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 highly. Um like yes. it, it's kind of like a cult game almost that has a very Yeah passionate dedicated fan base and then it's like not nobody else even knows it exists. So yeah, so I'm playing this game. Everything's voice acted. They have Japanese and English voice actors. Almost all the dialogue is voice acted. Uh, okay. The graphics are pretty good for a Switch game. This was a high budget game. Not a high budget game, but a high budget, like on par with like maybe Bad Netta type yeah. budget, right? Okay. Yeah. Um. So the game is is actually fun. It's well put together. I really can't understand how they go from like astral chain to babylon's fall i just i don't get it Oof. and maybe it's the funding Oof. i really don't understand that yeah um because yeah. this game like progresses what platinum is doing as far as action games yeah. like they're progressing the the genre and you can tell they they wanted to do more with this game yeah. or you can tell you can tell they wanted to create a world out of this game like this was like just the beginning right um, and there's probably gonna be prequels. They probably plan on prequels and sequels and all that shit like that. Um, and it did sell well for a Switch exclusive. It sold over a million, and I think the game came out in 2019. Yeah, and as of March 2020, like I, the stats are showing me, as of March 2020, it sold over a million. So it did sell pretty well. I don't know what's going on in Platinum though, because you know, a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about how they were having issues. We were like, "Hey, could someone fucking buy us or yeah. whatever the fuck?" Like, yeah, yeah. um, so I don't know what's going on with uh, with. They seem like they have a good relationship with Nintendo. So at this point, I would rather them stick with Nintendo. But I would rather Nintendo make them or not make them, but let them um, produce third party games for other well, consoles. I got like to say doing. though, they they just seem to be like because dude, Bayonetta three feels like it's in development hell right now too you know yeah um and like to be frank what we what they showed of it um when they revealed it like i didn't think it looked particularly great relative to the first couple um so i don't know man 
they seem like they're in a bad spot right now. I hope I hope Bayonetta three comes out and it's awesome and people love it. Um, mm-hmm. It can kind of help help them bounce back a little bit. But like, dude, I watched some gameplay of Babylon's Fall. Like, I went out of my way to watch it, and I can't even believe <laughs> that they made that game, dude. Like, it it's. I don't even know what the fuck it's supposed to be. It's it's bad, dude. It looks like a <laughs> bad PS2 era game. Like seriously, like it 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 looks horrible. The gameplay looks horrible. The the systems look bad. The UI looks bad. The voice acting is terrible. Everything about that game is just just horrible. Like it's it I can't believe <clears throat> it. Like I I'm like shocked, you know. So And just a reminder y'all uh, that game, Babylon's Fall, is really old. So when I got hired at my last job with Justin, mm-hmm. that's when that game was, like, announced. Yep. It was announced, like, maybe a year into that job. Because we were still sitting on the outside. We didn't have our own room yet. Um, You yep. know, when they pushed us back into the corner, <laughs> we didn't have that room yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I remember like being on the computer and like, oh, okay, this is supposed to be coming out and stuff like that. So this game was in development for at least five years. Right. Um, yeah. Right. And that's what they came out with. So the thing about Astral Train is it started development as soon as um, what's that one Dragon game called? That was from uh, Platinum Games and Xbox. Uh, Scalebound. Scalebound. Yeah. Scalebound. Yeah. When Scalebound died, they immediately started production on this, and you can tell it paid off. Um, Nintendo definitely got their money's worth. I mean, I think the game's pretty, pretty dope. But um, yeah. yeah, I feel bad for Platinum, man. I just feel really, really bad for them. Yeah, I mean, the th- they've always been a really inconsistent studio, but like they've had ups and they've had downs, right? But I feel like Babylon's Fall is just like a like a low that they've never <coughs> even come close to reaching. You know? Um, yeah. So I don't know. Hopefully, they can come out of it. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, that's it for what I was playing, though. All right, fair enough. Um, I mean, how much further in Xenoblade are you? Uh, I, not that far. I started playing Xenoblade, and then I started playing Astro Chain, so I'm okay. shuffling between both of them right now. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, let's uh, let's move into the news. So we actually have a good amount of news this week to talk about. So let's start with Blizzard. Uh, so they announced uh, this past week that Diablo Immortal is coming out. Uh, they gave it a release date of June 2nd. It is releasing on mobile on June 2nd, and it is also now coming to PC as well. So it's going to be a full PC game, um, but it is not releasing on PC on June 2nd. It is just going into open beta on June 2nd. So it's kind of weird. <coughs> the, the the They're... Like the game will be out on all platforms that day, but they're classifying the PC release as a beta, open beta. Um, but with this is coming, I, I believe they said in their um, release that it is going to have full cross progression. Um, yes, cross play and cross progression will be supported at launch. So you, <laughs> so this will be pretty robust, which is nice, and it's also going to support mouse and keyboard, of course, on PC, and will have traditional um, PC controls for the most part. It's kind of what they said. There will be some modifications they've made, some slight improvements, but for the most part, it should feel familiar. So this explains why we haven't heard about this game for a long-ass fucking time, you know? Um, This was the... this, This announcement and this BlizzCon, the BlizzCon that this game was announced at, is the reason... Montreal and I are doing this podcast like that that shit was like we we were so just we had to talk about all of that shit so badly that we fucking like decided to do a podcast so um yeah the this game finally coming out is kind of funny um because it's it's like the end of a I guess like a like a little bit of a journey for for us you know like because that's where we started but um I don't know, Montreal. What do you think? I mean, this game obviously it's been in it's been quiet for a very long time. Um, <clears throat> Blizzard seemingly uh, wants to release this right. Um, the game has been in beta for a while, but um, and it did have relatively positive buzz uh, when it came out then, and, and a lot of people got their hands on it. But 
Uh, this is still a free to play mobile game that will have microtransactions. So, yeah, I mean, it's free to play. Like, I, I know my 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 stance has changed on free to play games over the years since this game came out. Mm-hmm. I was totally against like free to play mobile games, but now I see the benefit of them for development costs and everything of that nature. So, if we can use this money to fund a better game in in the future, then I'm all for it. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, it's not like you're forced to play it, or it's not like you got to do a buy-in, a sixty-dollar buy-in, and then there's fucking you know microtransactions and shit like that. Um, <coughs> it's gonna be free on PC and mobile, so I mean, I'm I don't see any any uh, and we're we're getting a proper we had a, a Diablo remake uh that just came out, mm-hmm. and and then we're getting Diablo four that's coming out in the future. So I think everyone's satisfied on all fronts right now. As yeah. far as the Diablo fan base, I can't see anything anything bad coming from this. Yeah, I think um, I think the thing people are gonna probably grab onto with this is how much of your power as a player can be bought. Like, how far can you progress with money in in this game? Because that definitely will impact how fun it is as a Diablo game, right? As an ARPG. Um, yeah. So I think that's the thing that I'm going to be curious about with this <clears throat> is is how pay to win is it in that sense? You know, um, I don't mind if <clears throat> I become a lot more lenient with this over the years as well. Unfortunately, I think we have no choice in the matter. Like we all kind of have to. These things are part of gaming now. You know, like Lost Ark's a good example. Um, that game is pay to win, um, but <clears throat> it is a pay to win to a degree. Like you can't pay to win all the way. Like you can do it to an extent, right? So people who pay definitely have an advantage over those who don't pay, but it's not so severe that it completely ruins the experience, right? And I think that's the line that these games have to straddle if they're going to do that stuff. So um, I'll be interested to see it. I don't know if I'm going to play it or download it or anything like that, but I don't know. I might put it on my phone. Fuck it. <laughs> Just to piss Jet off. <laughs> That's going to be all butthurt. We're going to be like, hey, Jet, let's play Diablo Immortal together, together man. And he's going to be all like, have to take screenshots of us downloading it and put in and installing it. Yeah. And well, put it in the well, group chat. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a picture of my phone for you guys, you know. <laughs> I'm sure Snakes is going to download it day one, right? Um, so he, he was super excited about it. Remember, he was the one defending it when they announced it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You remember that? Uh, it's just funny. So, I mean, it's a long time coming. I'm glad it's finally coming out, though. Um, I don't think this is so offensive as an idea that it shouldn't exist. Um, I think a Diablo mobile game could be really fun. Um, so we shall see. All right, let's move on, Montreal. Next story. Uh, so there's been some, uh, there was a report by Bloomberg um, uh, this past week that Twitch is considering making changes to its partner program and the biggest of which being they are thinking of cutting their partnered streamer cut, which is currently for partnered streamers can be up to 70% for the partner. 30% goes to Twitch. It starts at 50, 50 um, and it goes up to 60, 40 and then 70, 30 um, when they decide that you're worthy enough for that split. Basically it's very arbitrary from what I understand. But they are also considering along with this cut, um, increasing the amount of ads that um, can be played on a stream and then also um, ending the exclusivity requirement for being on the platform. So today, if you're on Twitch, uh, you cannot uh, you can't stream on other platforms. So they're thinking of doing away with that. That's if you're partnered by the way um so so you can't you can't stream on like uh youtube youtube yeah okay so if you're partnered though right i believe (laughs) that's only for partners i mean obviously if you're not making any money like you (laughs) like you can do whatever the fuck you want who cares but i think once you become a partner obviously you have to sign an agreement with them you know um and at that point i believe everybody is exclusive at that point so they're thinking of doing away with this exclusivity which maybe is their way of allowing people to make more money, but taking more cut, more of a cut themselves, you know? So you could stream simultaneously on YouTube and Twitch 
and make money on both. Maybe that's the idea that they're trying to allow potentially. Uh, but I don't know. So, I mean, what do you think of these changes? Um, I think they're needed to be honest with you. Um, I don't know about like lowering. Well, I guess it makes sense if you lower, if you're allowing your partners to stream on other platforms, you're also lower the amount they can get because they'll be getting other revenues from other platforms. So I yeah, think but it's dude, fifty percent. Like, I just want to say this though. Like, fifty percent cut for them is extreme, dude. You know, like that is. So where are they lot. getting now? Well, uh, so it starts at fifty fifty, right? When you first start streaming and you you first get partnered. Um, it's 50 mm-hmm. 50, but eventually, um, when Twitch, like I said, when Twitch arbitrarily decides you are worthy, you can get a higher split for yourself. Um, and more powerful streamers can negotiate harder, obviously, you know, people like, you know, Dr. Disrespect or Ninja or whoever, you know, um, can obviously rec- like negotiate for higher splits. But, um, so yeah, this, I mean, you're going to if this happens, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest, you're going to hear the loudest outcry from the higher like the 1% streamers, you know, the higher end streamers. They are going to Okay, be, so it, they're going to be screaming from the mountaintops, you know. So it doesn't matter your your status, you're going to get it's going to be 50% across the board now. That's yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's bullshit. I don't like that. But I I, I guess I guess it's okay for variety streamers or variety platform streamers. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just think Twitch has too much power. So I don't know. But this would like, it's so weird. It's so weird. This will kill their platform potentially though. Yeah. This would be like a Netflix thing. Yeah, they, they seem, I, I just don't understand. I really don't understand what they're fucking doing lately. I just don't understand the people who run Twitch, like the decision making they make. They just seem antagonistic towards their own like content creators, you know, like I just like we're, like where where YouTube is ambivalent, like, you know, like it, it the, like at least it seemed like they care about their creators. Like Twitch, on the other hand, just feels like it feels the total opposite for me, dude. Like they just they like fucking don't even like their creators, you know. Um, yeah, um, so that's actually very funny you say that. So, um, unfortunately, because I have a long drive home, I think I already mentioned this on the podcast, but I have a long drive home. So I've uh, I've slipped into the debate bro version or side of Twitch. Yeah. They debate over toil- politics <laughs> and everything. Okay. And, um, but they're like gaming nerds, though. They're like nerds yeah. like us. They play video games. Yeah. And sometimes while they're debating, they're playing video games or whatever. And this is one super popular one guy called Destiny. He actually, um, I think like back in 2015, he got into a, a debate with JonTron over like black people. Because mm. <laughs> JonTron was saying some really racist shit and he mm-hmm. called him out on it. Um, but anyway, uh, he got he recently got axed. Because of uh, they were having debates and it was over like trans issues or something like that. And he's not transphobic. Uh, it was over a debate of like, you know, trans women and sports mm. and women's sports and mm. everything like that. Mm. Anyway, he got kicked off the platform because of that. Oh, yeah. Um, And well, he thinks that's what they got kicked out of off the platform. They won't they tell don't him. Actually, though, right? They won't tell <laughs> him. <laughs> fucking like, God, dude. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's perma banned off the platform now and he's on YouTube streaming. But um, and he can have those debates over there on YouTube. Uh, but the problem was when he, he's a he's a left leaning person, so he debates right ringers, but he also debates like super hardcore left leaning people as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it was actually the super hardcore left leaning people that got the ba- that got that got him banned, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, the right leaning people as well they get banned off Twitch because of some of the stuff they don't agree with, that they disagree with abortion or you know. Yeah. Uh, this is not the third. So it's hard to have a conversation or debate with anyone when a platform doesn't allow that. So I, I just think Twitch is very overreach, overreaching because like those type of things need to be had and said or whatever. Um, well, like, I, th- yeah, I have a hard disagreement with this stuff too. With that, with that kind of thing is like, like <laughs> if you have a political opinion about abortion, I don't care what side of the fence you're on, you're not. A horrible person you know and that that extends to many political topics and that is where like 
a platform like Twitch deciding that you can't be on the platform for something like that is like a way bridged way too far for me. Yeah, sure. If we're getting into prejudice, racism, fuck that, yeah. fuck that shit. Like get that off the platform. But like, dude, I, I just, I don't know. Like, I, I think, I think, I think they extend the logic of, of, you know, being against hate and racism to far too many topics. And I mean, in this case, we're speculating right it's it's not proven that that's why they banned him but it sounds like this guy is a reasonable dude he just like talked about a specific topic yeah, was, and then all of a sudden he's banned off twitch i mean you could put fucking the, yeah. put the dots together right so yeah exactly yeah so i mean he got banned for uh for some other he got temporarily banned you know how they just give you like temporary man but this one he got perma banned off of that one yeah um that's wild but like he, I think he was one of the original like streamers. Like he started, like, I don't want to say he started the whole streaming thing, but he was like one of the original people that were like people were watching and streaming, and then he went on Twitch and stuff like that. So he was one of their originals, and now he's gone. And um, I just think that's fucking crazy. Like I don't know what's going on with Twitch. Um, well, I do know what's going on with Twitch. They just they they don't have any competition right now. Uh, YouTube is is it's it's getting there um and then i don't know mixer through no through no merit of their own though it's <laughs> yeah it's just through <laughs> being there like they're just there you know like that's where people um, go when they get banned you know exactly and uh there's another streaming site called cozy uh mm. popping up yeah and um i don't know i just i i really wish Microsoft didn't give up on Mixer so fast. Yeah. I think that was one of their biggest blunders, like, in the last five years. Like, people people say the Xbox One is their biggest blunder. I think Mixer is their biggest blunder because that had unlimited growth potential. They just kept putting money into it. Like, they only gave it two years, I think, two or three years. They yeah. didn't even give it that much time um, because now Twitch is shooting themselves in the foot. Like, people are leaving. People hate Twitch. Like if you talk to if you watch streaming and you talk to people, a lot of people hate Twitch now. Um, so I mean, I don't the know. viewers don't like Twitch either. This is like Twitter, dude. Nobody likes Twitter either, but that's like the place to go. Like it's the only place to go to do the thing yeah. you do on Twitter. You know, so it's like that's where everybody fucking goes. But we most of us fucking hate it. Like it's it's well, uh, I, it's like the it's like the i wanted to put this on the icebreaker but it's like the netflix thing right like i oh, canceled yeah. my netflix recently oh yeah um yeah so like netflix for the last decade was the guy to go to or the woman or whatever the company to go to for your streaming shit and then everyone else they had competition and as soon as the competition got big yeah. like disney plus came out i oh, yeah. disney plus and hbo max i have those like I don't even need anything else now because I have a bundle with HB uh, with Hulu and Disney, or whatever. Blah, blah blah. Anyway, well now dude, they're yeah yeah now now they're done and now they're doing stupid shit like Twitch doing this fifty percent shit. They're doing stupid shit too, where they're like, oh well, you get nine ninety nine and you get four eighty p good quality. What? Oh my Bro, god, I haven't dude. watched four eighty p since like Bro, that's, like, game, that's like GameCube quality. Like, what are we talking about? The four eighty p? What? Like, what am I watching it on a thirteen inch fucking CRT? Like, come on, <laughs> dog. Like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? That's not a that's not a service anybody wants in twenty twenty two. No, this is the thing. I think I think I'm glad you brought up Netflix because I actually wanted to talk about that too. Um, is I think I, I think these three companies, I think Netflix is is further along in their path than um, Twitch and Twitter are in this realm. Is that you mm -hmm. like you're talking about? Netflix has competition now. They were winning and they were doing super well because there was no one really around to f compete with them. Like nobody was offering services that were comparable, you know. And now that there are. Netflix doesn't know what to do. They're fucking floundering, dude. Like, <laughs> like they are, they're fucking hemorrhaging money. Like they, they're barely profitable. And they're talking about losing another million or 2 million subscribers in the next fucking quarter. Like, bro, that's fucking bad. And what's their reaction to that? Let's lock down Price password height. sharing. Yeah. Let's lock <laughs> down password sharing, which is something they, they allowed for a long ass time and then raise your prices as well. Like what, what are you talking about? You, 
you're doing nothing to retain your your user base. Like you're just trying to squeeze more money out of the people you have. That's not going to that's not going to work long term. Like this is like a short term band-aid maybe, but dude, like there is a point that I think Netflix will crest that they're going to cost too much per month and people are going to leave, you know? Cuz well, the large majority of the content on the platform, the good shows were have been out for years. Like they're they're not making good shit anymore. Like when's the last time they released a show besides like Squid Game maybe? that was like a fucking mega hit, you know, it's like they, they do one every couple of years, maybe, you know? Yeah. I mean, and their heavy hitters were like the Marvel shit. And then Disney snatched that up. I mean, they have like, and, and that's what I was waiting against, right? Like their bread and butter shows, like bread and butter shows to me are like your parks and recreation, your office, your yeah. friends. I hate, even though I hate friends, uh, shit you like, can turn on and ig- almost ignore, you know, exactly. Yeah. All that shit is gone now. Like yeah. all that shit's gone. Um, yeah. And they, they don't, don't have, have their like, own shows, their own original content that fits that ex- mold. Really? Ex- you know? Exactly. Exactly. And, um, I, I don't know, like what, what do you do as a company? And then the other thing that, the, the, all three of these companies have in common is, um, which I want to talk about later on in the show. So I'll, I'll save it for later on in the show if we have time. If you if you want to talk about it, um, mm-hmm. but they all have this. Now keep in mind when I say this, y'all, I am a leftist. Anyway, so they all have this woke period, right? You remember the Dave Chappelle shit that happened oh, yeah. over the s- summer of 2020? Yeah. Uh, Twitch, obviously, they're banning people f- for if they they don't like what they say. And then we already know Twitter is like locking down. They fucking got rid of the president of the United States, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we we all know he was ridiculous. Like, come on, we he was saying I mean, some ridiculous shit. He is shit. ridiculous. However, he was also endlessly entertaining on Twitter. Like, come <laughs> exactly. on, dude. Like. Like, give me Twitter, a break. I'm not gonna lie, it's been real boring. We got some, Twitter, he man. had some goaded <laughs> tweets, man. Like the the Kofifi tweet is is all time, you know. Like that is some funny ass shit right there. It was one tweet. It was some guy in Congress, like a Congress or the Senate, who was like actually on the Senate board talking, yeah. Yeah. talking to the Senate, yeah. and his nipples were like poking through the shirt. Oh my god. <laughs> And he's like, look at this senator. Nip was protruding, just nasty, very, dis- <laughs> very disrespectful. <laughs> <What's> sad. <laughs> dude, dude, the, thing is, the thing about it, it's so fucking. It's just like it's so, it's so fucking like it's so funny, man. Like that, that shit. He, he just like he had no, he had no filter to the point that. Like you see these joke accounts for, for very popular or, or important people out there all the time. There's tons of them, right? Like fucking CEOs yeah. and shit and president. You can't tell with his joke accounts if they're real or not. Like they sound just like the way he tweets, you know, it's like, that's what's so funny about them. And the, the, and the crazy part about it was like all these real tweets they were yeah. like even the joke accounts couldn't match the level of the president uh, yeah. of the, or the ex-president of yeah. the united states and it was yeah. that shit like i think back at that time though i just remember we being scared like he was like one tweet away from setting off nukes bro but he's gonna he's that, gonna declare war on twitter or something Oh my God! But God, Which damn, was, that I shit mean, fucking funny. I still funny. think was very possible <laughs> at any particular moment. Everybody's like showing their drafts right now, bro. You don't want to know what Donald Trump's drafts look like. <laughs> <laughs> How many tweets did he have antagonizing North Korea or something? You know, or China? Could you imagine him tweeting during this time? Oh, oh my, my God, God, dude! Oh Jesus Christ, dude! Oh so my God, you know, it's it it, it that so. Okay, so yeah, Twitter can do what they want. It's their platform, right? They can ban yep. whoever they want. <clears throat> However, <clears throat> I think the thing is your point is well taken in the sense that they are showing a propensity to not support a specific vertical of opinion, you know? And yeah. that has permeated into other platforms like Twitch, for instance, YouTube to a lesser extent um, <clears throat> as well. And this is a... This is the kind of thing to me that it hasn't permeated politics as much. Um, Really, these people, this like extreme left wing, they are like a niche that has power 
on a very specific <laughs> part of the internet, and that is like yeah. Twitter and Twitch. They don't like yeah. have power anywhere else, but they wield it like a mighty hammer on Twitter, dude. Like they come at people, dude. Like I was, uh, I was like looking the other day, and uh, there's this guy named uh, Gene Park who appeared on uh, one of Colin Moriarty's podcasts. And dude, when I tell you left wing gaming Twitter fucking went at Gene Park, bro. Like they were fucking like losing it. They were like, bro, I'm so disappointed in you. I can't believe you would platform this guy. I can't fucking believe you would even talk to him. Like, it's like, dude, like what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Like, like no it's 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 fucking insanity like it's insanity the shit they're fucking they're like fucking crazy they're losing their shit like they are so obsessed with platforming and deplatforming people it's like like you can't give exposure to people who have opinions that they disagree with like it's it's like authoritarian like crazy shit you know like so, so I do, I do want to like show up at this because I, I do want to talk about this like a little okay. bit later. All right. Because yeah, we are getting this, into the weeds. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. this is all encompassing, but, but we can definitely get back to this. Yeah. One final thing about Twitter though, and uh, mm-hmm. Twitch is that they aren't in the maturity period that YouTube's in. Other platforms have not come out to compete with them um, in a sufficient way. Twitch is closer to that realm than uh, Twi- Twitter is right now. Sorry, Twitch is mm-hmm. closer to that than Twitter. Uh, because YouTube is becoming a viable platform for streamers and Twitch is not <laughs> responding in a way I think that is good for them, right? I think they're shooting yeah, themselves just, in the foot, personally. Yeah, I, I think they have too much power. Like, uh, not too much power. They just have too much of a monopoly on the marketplace right now. Um, the only pl- people that were competing with them was YouTube and Mixer. And then Mixer was like, well, we're out of here and we're going to Facebook Gaming and <laughs> what have you heard about Facebook gaming in a minute yeah. or meta gaming or whatever the fuck it's called now <laughs> so <Meta-gaming>. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually awesome that's actually a good name <laughs> fuck uh, they they, uh, but, they fell into that accidentally that was not on purpose yeah. um, but I don't know it's a uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be rough it's gonna be a rough couple of, uh, cause they can potentially kill streaming this can kill streaming mm-hmm. like the streaming culture like yeah. can you know, so I don't know, man. Well, I mean, what would you do? How would you feel? Because I know you're a really big Twitter user, but how would you feel if Elon just deleted Twitter? Just uh, deleted it. Thank God. <laughs> he would be my hero. I'm just going to say that right now. Like. Fuck that website, bro. Twitter is horrible. It has done horrible. Th- like it is, it is created such a monster in like human society. I can't stand the platform. I the only the only reason I go on it is to promote this podcast. That's like pretty much literally the only reason I ever go on it anymore. Yeah, that, so. I, I thought about deleting my account, but I have too many followers and. We yeah. get some hits off that when I retweet it, so I just. Well, keep you my have account. like legitimate friendships on there too, which I can see the appeal yeah. there. I don't. I'm a nobody. Like nobody interacts with me. So I'm just going on there looking at other people screaming their opinion into the void, you know? And it's Oh it's, yeah, yeah. It's just like I a hate my... mongering fucking shit show. So Yeah, see, I've been on so long where I tailored my Twitter to where I don't see none of that shit anymore. Yeah. So Yeah. yeah. I, I but I can definitely understand you seeing it all the time and that's why I went out my way to do that mm-hmm. to my Twitter. Yeah. Um, but it still leaks into my Twitter all the time. So, I mean, I complain about it all the time. Yeah. Um, but in the same time, it's just like, if we delete Twitter, I'm afraid another website would suffer. Um, and I say They would that go somewhere. Remember, you're, you're right. They would ex- go somewhere. Exactly. Because yeah. you remember what happened to Tumblr. The reason yeah. why twi- t- Twitter is the way it is right now is because of Tumblr. Like when that happened in Tumblr, holy shit! I saw it. Yeah, it happened full swing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Well, let's table that for for the moment, and we got we got more news to go through. So let's move on. <clears throat> so, Yuji Naka. Okay, he is um, the uh, creator of uh, Sonic, I believe. Right. Is that right? Is Pretty it? sure that's right. Sure. 
I don't I don't know if he's the creator, but he's he's one of the uh he's one of the people originally evolved with Sonic, right? Big big yeah. name there. So he went to Square Enix a while back and was working on a game called Balan Wonderland, right? That game came out last year and it was horrible. Uh the game has a 36 on Metacritic on Metacritic <laughs> on Switch and a 51 on PlayStation. Um this game was really really bad um all around. Um so it was clearly it shouldn't have been released as soon as it was released um and it wasn't ready for prime time. But we didn't really know the story behind it like what happened to the game uh until seemingly today uh where yuji naka um uh tweeted uh, like had a whole twitter thread basically explaining a bunch of things that happened with this game and uh he said that basically square enix uh uh there was a business order at square enix to remove him as the game's director uh, about six months before the game came out and then he filed a lawsuit against Square Enix, which is now, according to him, resolved. Um, but unfortunately, I mean, everything's happened. The game's out. It's over, right? And eventually, at mm. the very end of this, he apologized. So he said, quote, Personally, I'm really sorry that I released the unfinished work, Balan Wonderland, to the world. I want to think about various things. I wanted to think about various things and put it out in a proper form as an action game. I think Square Enix and Arzest are companies that don't care about games and game fans, end quote. So that is uh, quite the indictment on Square Enix. Uh, Montreal, do you... Uh, and by the way, he is the creator of Sonic. Um, yeah, I just looked so, it up. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, how, how does this strike you, Montreal? Do you, do you, do you find some uh, honesty in his words, or do you think this is a man that's bitter? Um, with how his his uh, game uh, wasn't well received. Uh, man, that is a good question. Cause I don't, I'm bitter. <laughs> towards <laughs> towards Enix. I'm bitter as fuck towards the motherfuckers. Yeah. Uh, man, I think it's a little bit of both. I think both can be true. Yeah, I. Agree. I think he's bitter. I think he's bitter towards them. I would be bitter too if I was working on a project and six months before release they take me off the project. Mm-hmm. Um, I would well, be then they release it anyways. That. He might not have been planning to release it, you know, six months after he was removed. He 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 might have been planning to work on it for another year or two, and Square Enix said, "Get fucked," you know. Um, yeah. So we don't know that he didn't he didn't talk about that at all. So. Yeah. So you got that, and then. Well, I mean, we've seen Square's track record. And I, I sent you a text because it, it sounded familiar. It sounded like Tabata all over again. Yeah. Like, this sounded like a Tabata incident mm. where Tabata was working. He got pulled off a project, then put on a project again, then pulled off again. And I don't know what Square Enix is doing. I, I don't know. They mm. give certain privileges to certain people. Like we never heard of no more getting put off a project. Yeah, and it seems like everybody else is treated poorly. You know, yeah, all the other studios are treated poorly. Like Eidos, Crystal, Crystal Dynamics. Like, it, like it feels like Square has like a, a a group that's like the the gentleman's club, you know, and that's like the primary Japanese development office where Nomura is in control, and maybe Yoshida to a degree as well. Um, and then everybody else is like a second class citizen at Square Enix. That's kind of what it feels like to me, dude, because you can just tell with the quality of the games that come out, dude, like, and, and the way Square Enix treats them, you know, like Eidos makes consistently high quality games. They, they have for, for a decade and a half now, you know, but, um, it's, it's not because of Square in any particular way. You know, to me, Square Enix lets Eidos down every time they release a game. They either don't market it properly, which is true of Guardians of the Galaxy, or they fill it with microtransactions that don't belong in the game like they did with Deus Ex fucking Mankind Divided. And they they fucking mark or and then in that game's case, they market the game in one of the worst ways imaginable and fucking tank the game's interest level, you know? So but then with their 
the games that Nomura makes, you know, it's like these fucking like they're, they're, they're they they have these fucking concerts to announce his games, you know, these like fucking giant world tours where they're doing like Kingdom Hearts music tours and shit. You know, it's like I, I just don't I don't I don't understand this company, dude. You know, so well, the I idea mean, that this happened to this guy sales. is not surprising to me, you know. Yeah, I mean the more sales though, right? You I mean we 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 shit on him, but he sells big pictures, and yeah. the big picture pays off. Yeah, but I think I think my point is is that he sells because Square Enix puts their weight behind him in a competent way. They go out of their way to make sure his games are seen by many, many, many people. A lot of the other like studios they have, they don't they don't do that as much, you know. Um, they, yeah. they like screw them over and then the way they handle their games. So I don't know. I mean, this is dude, this yeah, is the creator I, of Sonic. You can't do anything with him. Like you, you can't like, you can't get the proper output out of him. Like that's in, that seems insane to me, you know? Yeah, no, you're right. It's just, I'm I'm looking at the game right now, and it's just it just the animations, everything looks unfinished. Yeah, like this looks yeah. like a PS three game, a PS two game, maybe. Mm-hmm. Like this look like this should came out on PS two, um, but I don't I don't know. Like one, I I, I do agree with him in one sentiment. Like I'm I'm thinking about it more. I'm thinking about it more. I was listening to you talk. And I think Marvel, uh, the Avengers, is one of the greatest examples that Square Enix doesn't really care about video games anymore. Mm-hmm. Because to do that to that game, you have an unlimited something like the Avengers. You have an unlimited mm-hmm. like imagination, right? Yeah. And to limit the developers to what they had to do with that game and make it a fucking live service game. Is insane to me, and then the way it was just what? handled, yeah, it's just crazy, man. Like, well, dude, yeah, and you remember the monetization they did with it, where they have this battle pass, where you you buy the battle pass, and then you have to buy additional layers of the battle pass to unlock like specific characters. Remember? Do you remember that? Yep. Like it yep. was like a battle pass that had like five other battle passes in it that were for a specific character. You know, it was like some insane shit like that. And, like, only Square Enix could come up with this shit, you know? Like, uniquely. And, of course, it has to be Crystal Dynamics game that they do this to, you know? It's it's yep. it's fucking... Like, they don't do that shit to Final Fantasy XIV, you know? Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, why are you doing this to your Western games? Like, I don't I don't get that, you know? So, I mean, in this, this, in this case, Yuji Naka, this isn't even a Western game. This is a Japanese game, but... Like, I, I don't know. Maybe there's something behind the scenes we don't know about. I'm sure there is. We're only hearing his side of the, the story here. But um, at the same time, it's very clear that this game was not finished. You know, like looking at screenshots of this, this is just like this looks like a like a like barely out of alpha build. Well, you remember best, when we you know? saw the trailer for it and I was like, what? I, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah. I I was just like I was thrown back by how terrible it looked. Well, and I was it, just like from a control standpoint, um everything I heard about it was that like they used one they used all the buttons on the the controller for the same function. And then they would they like they didn't have different functions on different buttons, you know? You'd have like mm-hmm. four different things on one button, but then all the buttons would do all four of those things, you know? It was like what? it was total insanity. Yeah, dude. So so like like the face buttons on 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 a controller, right? A B X Y or something or or cross, square, circle, triangle. Um, mm-hmm. they would all be jump, but then they would all also be attack, you know? And they would all be confirm and they would all be back. Like it was like weird shit like that, dude, like shit that you would never launch a game like that with, you know? So that kind of lends credence to what he's saying here is that they pooped the game out after they kicked him off of it, you know? Um, And yeah, I don't know. It's very bizarre. Very, very bizarre. So uh, we'll see if Square Enix releases a statement. I doubt it. <laughs> I wouldn't expect them to respond to this kind of thing. But um, 
And it's not like they're bleeding for money because they have other avenues of getting money. So right. I, I don't know. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see, I guess, if they ever respond. Uh, but it is an unfortunate. Um, there was a really unfortunate game. So, um, okay, let's move on. Uh, Ubisoft is in the news. There is a rumor coming out of Bloomberg that they are uh, potentially going to be bought by some private equity firms, uh, potentially called uh, Blackstone, KKR, and some others that are interested in Jesus purchasing Christ. Ubisoft. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like the most sinister fucking companies to get. I know. <laughs> fucking bought by. Right. Yeah. Who names their company Blackstone? Um, <laughs> So some fucking frat dude or whatever. Yeah, like, dude. Yeah, yeah. Blackstone, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Blackstone Inc. actually is what it's called. Um, oh god. So, so yeah, there's there's some interest apparently in Ubisoft, which I mean, what do you think about this? Because to me, this is like uh this is puzzling. I don't find Ubi I mean, I'm sure companies with money to burn will look for something to invest in, right? That's just how companies tend to operate, but Ubisoft has got to be one of the last like fucking video game companies I'd actually want to buy. Like they they just lack creativity in almost every way most of the time and they are hyper reliant on Tom Clancy and Assassin's Creed in a way that is like really unappealing to me from an investment standpoint, but I mean what do you think? No, I agree. I- I don't really see the appeal to Ubisoft games uh, anymore. Like, I thought the Assassin's Creed games were cool, and well, a lot of their games are just too hyper-realistic. They don't yeah. really take any risks with their games anymore, yeah. or at all. And then the games that people do want back, they refuse to bring them back, or they refuse to bring them back in a way that people want them to bring them back. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is really weird. That, I mean, I, it makes sense why they want to get bought because they haven't really, they really shit like the, well, they want to get bought so they can cash out before the com- company fucking creators. Right. Yeah. Because I think the most successful game they have right now is rainbow six. Like that's the one everyone's like, yo, mm-hmm. this game's really fucking good. Yeah. But besides that, I can't really think of another game. Oh, and maybe for honor, but uh, the, the, the steam came and went on that game. So mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah, they so, don't have any MMOs or they don't have any sustainable games. Well, dude, they can't even all. come out with a BR that people like. They keep trying and failing, you know. Um, they've taken the Tom Clancy name off of um, X Defiant, which is their next BR that they're trying, um, that they're going to make. So it's like, they're just like, I don't, I just, I don't know, dude. Like, they, they have hits every once in a while and they have games that are good, you know, that happen occasionally. But it's just... They just, like I said, they just lack creativity, though. It just seems like they, like a lot of their studios are just churning out the same kind of game over and over and over, dude, you know? So, yeah. and their obsession with shooters goes deeper than even Activision Blizzards to me, you know? It's like, like all they do is make fucking shooters, man. Like fucking Far Cry, you've got 18 different Tom Clancy games at any given time you're making. Like, it's just, it's just too much, dude, you know? So. Well, even their shooters, right? Um, like the quality of the shooters. Like, there's a video online comparing Far Cry Five to Far Cry Two, mm-hmm. and it's like the small details that they put in Far Cry Two when you shoot an enemy and his buddy would come up and try to give him first aid or try to drag him out of cover and stuff like that. And whereas, like in Far Cry Five, that AI doesn't even exist. Or when you throw a fucking grenade in in fucking a field of grass the grass will slowly burn like like real grass like it was that's how it would burn like in the field or whatever mm-hmm. that's not even on far cry 5 and it's just like little details like that that a lot of players appreciate about far cry and it's like their games are just bad in quality now yeah. like they used to make really high quality games and really niche games i i remember far cry being a really niche game now, i didn't really play until years later and i'm like man i'm i'm mad i missed this game you know, this year or, you know, when it didn't come out, but I'd probably didn't have a PC or whatever at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, I don't know. I just remember playing the first Assassin's Creed and now playing Assassin's Creed now. And it's just like, it's just like, oh, all right. Another fucking Assassin's Creed, bro. <laughs> you know, 
Yeah. It, even like, you know, uh, not Rainbow Six, but the other game, Ghost Recon. Yeah. I remember when fucking um, Ghost Recon Future Soldier came out. I was like all for that game. That game was really fucking dope. A lot of people love that game. Um, and then now you have Ghost Recon or Breaking Point or Breakpoint or whatever the fuck. And it's yeah. like, and even their most recent games, like The Division, even though that game's weird because it has an appeal to where it's like, wow, this is gonna be a really good game. They just never capital, they just never they had something going with it. And then when they released the division two, it was just shit. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, they like, just the like they, they like took <laughs> out everything that was good about the division one, you know? Yeah. And it, like everyone remembers how I mean good and bad the dark zone was. And then when the Division Two came out, I remember we went into the Dark Zone. We were like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, there's like six is... people on the map, and it's like <laughs> literally like it feels like you're in an arena shooter map. Like, come on, yep. dude, what the fuck was going? Like, dude, the Dark Zone in the Division One was like a huge area that had multiple NPC camps, NPCs patrolling around and shit. Like, it was it was fucking crazy, man. Like. It, it obviously the problems with it was that it was tailored towards large groups of players like who were playing yeah. together that was the main issue but there are ways to mitigate that that don't that where you're not like gutting the fucking whole point of it you know um yep. so i don't know they they like they look they like lose the plot of what makes their games fun man i just i don't i don't i don't know like they're they're so that that's kind of my whole point i just don't see what the appeal of buying them is but I guess if you're like a businessman who doesn't even understand anything that we just talked about <laughs> and you just see a company that makes a lot of money that, you know, has been doing poorly lately, you probably think you can turn it around and make them prop like super profitable again. So, yep. Um, yep. you know, so I, I think they're trying to bait themselves to getting bought by Xbox. That's what I think. Or Sony, they really want yeah. one them to buy them and it's not going to happen. I don't think so either. I, I couldn't see any reason why Xbox would actually want Ubisoft. And, and Sony even more so. There's like fucking no appeal to buying <laughs> Ubisoft for Sony. Like, I like they would buy Square Enix way before they would buy Ubisoft to me. So, yeah. But I don't want any of those to happen. By the way, so. But we'll see if if they do get bought out. We will certainly talk about it here on the show. Um. All right, Montreal. Let's move on. Next story. Uh, Microsoft. Uh, has announced that they are going to be doing a game showcase for Xbox and Bethesda Game Studios on June 12th. So they are doing a not E3, E3 showcase, because uh, it is the same weekend, I believe, that E3 would have been held uh, had it still been going on this year. So they're just doing it uh, on their own, doing their own event. Um, I would probably expect this to be pretty big because beyond starfield in november we don't really know a lot about their future release schedule right now uh this is also true of sony so i'm kind of expecting a lot here but i mean that doesn't mean it's gonna be good but nope don't hold your fucking breath bro <laughs> <laughs> well how do you feel about it i'm not i'm legitimately not holding my fucking breath mm -hmm. like we still don't know what the fuck starfield is i know yeah maybe you they'll know. show some gameplay for that you know five months before the game's supposed to come out <laughs> dude they've still never shown gameplay that's insane to me that's why that's pretty fucking it's, wild it's scary bro it's scary to me yeah and I'm just surprised, like, no one else is scared. Oh. Like, it's fucking scary. Dude, in the way Bethesda's talking about the game, like, saying shit like, like, dude, the things we're doing with Starfield, guys, it's going to blow your minds, you know? Like, why hasn't no one shut him up? Like, why hasn't yeah. nobody shut Todd him up? Todd Howard, yeah, man. Like, yeah, no. shut up. No, Todd but, Howard. dude, the thing is, it's like nobody learned their lesson from, like, Fallout 76 or Fallout 4. Dude, people are eating it up. They're so hyped about this game. I, know, I don't get man. it. I know. I don't get, I don't get it. it either. Am I crazy? I don't get it. No. I I literally, when I see people talk about Starfield, and they're like, oh, man, I just can't fucking wait. I can't fucking wait for Starfield to drop. And I'm just like, not even Star, not even 
Fallout 76, bro. Have we not learned anything from Cyberpunk? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. No, this like, is way was, worse than that. Though. That was only two years ago, man. Like, we haven't even seen the game yet. <laughs> like, I don't understand what's going on. You know, like, it's it's, it's one of those things. And, like, um, they, they mention in the article, too, like, Everwild, Contraband. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Hellblade 2. Uh, Fa- Hellblade Fable. 2, Fable. Like, all these games, man. All we saw were, like, CGI trailers, bro. Hellblade 2 is the only exception. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Hellblade 2, we did see That is the only exception. That's the only exception. Yeah, but then Outer Worlds 2, same thing. We've not seen anything. State of Decay 3, we've not seen anything. Fable, we've not seen anything. Contraband, we've not seen anything. Everwild, they restarted development on that game, so we've not seen anything. Like, Perfect Dark, we've not seen anything. And clearly, that game's in development hell anyway. So, like, Avowed, we've not seen anything. Like... (laughs) You've got Redfall. We've not seen anything. Like, you've got all these games that you've announced, and we have not seen gameplay out of any of them. Any of them. They cannot. There is no excuse for this event if we don't get big, big gameplay trailers for some of these games. Like, like I'm sorry. <laughs> at this point, it's like shit or get off the pot for me at a certain point. Yeah, no, you're right. Like, I'm so tired of, and I understand this is like a staple in the industry, but maybe gamers should push back towards it. Maybe the industry themselves should put, no more CGI trailers, bro. Gameplay only. Don't mm-hmm. don't even mention it, bro. How long have I been waiting for Sonic Frontiers gameplay? Don't even show me the fucking trailer, bro. I don't even want to know the game exists unless you have yeah. one minute of gameplay, bro. Yeah. I even take 10 seconds. Show me 10 seconds, bro. Yeah. That's it. Bro, I'm going to be a fanboy for a second again, like I always am. But Xenoblade Chronicles, they announced it seven months before it's supposed to come out with a gameplay trailer, you know, like in-game footage of of the game, you know. And then they come out with another trailer two months later of more gameplay footage. Like, that's how you do it. That's it. That's how you do it. You don't tease the game four years before it comes out with a fucking title crawl or a title, just a title. That's it, you know? And then, you like, a year after that, you show some concept art. And then a year after that, you show, like, a cinematic that isn't even in-game, you know? <laughs> and then a year after that, you don't show anything and you talk about how hype your game is, how amazing your game is going to be without showing shit. And then six months before the game comes out, we still haven't seen any gameplay. You know, like come on, man. Ugh. Yeah, no, it's 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 pretty fucking bad. Like it yeah. is. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I think a lot's riding on this for me. We've had a lot of praise for Xbox, but there is a point where they are, um, they have to produce something like I, I'm just I'm sorry. Like they, they just at some point they have to release games, you know? Yeah. Like, the, the carrot at the end of the stick shit is is a uh, is over with now. They're still treating this like it's 2015 and it's not anymore, bro. Like yeah. we I think we all progressed as gamers. Yeah. Um, well, I think we've all been burned enough as gamers. Mm-hmm. I don't think the shit that the company's doing the comp that this is not just Xbox doing this. A lot of companies are doing this. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm not like F- Final Fantasy 16, right? We haven't seen anything else from that fucking game. Yeah. And I'm scared now cuz I haven't seen anything else from this fucking game. And let, but they show gameplay, right? Yeah. But then they they can easily change it, you know, cuz they they're known for doing shit like that. So we haven't seen anything for from these games and I think it's not just Xbox doing this, but I think game companies should it, change the way they market games mm-hmm. and i think we as gamers need to change the way we consume mm-hmm. this marketed material you know because yeah. if we keep getting hype and like oh my god and blah, 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 like, i'm guilty of it you're guilty of it everybody's guilty of it mm-hmm. because we're fucking gamers yeah it just it the the industry we have to change our mindset on it and we won't get shit like this that Microsoft does at their conferences. Yeah. Cause I guarantee you, bro, I guarantee you, we're not going to see gameplay for this for Starfield. It, 
I guarantee fucking see it. Like there's I put no that in my way. life, bro. There's no way. I can't, dude. They can't justify that. If if that's true, if that happens, <laughs> that game is not coming out in November. I'm just putting that on the table right now. Like you remind me of that Jesse Pinkman meme where he's like, he can't keep getting away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching Breaking Bad right now too. That's great. Yeah, they can't keep getting away, <laughs> uh, dude. No, for real though. Like, dude, you can't. Like, if 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 they don't show gameplay of this game, I, it's not coming out this year. I'm sorry. I'm. Just, it's just. It's just fucking not. It's just fucking not. If you can't show gameplay five months before your game comes out, like your game's not coming out in five months. Like, I'm. I'm fucking sorry. I'm just like, I, like. So to me, that is like a non-starter. That game has got to show gameplay. And 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 I know people would probably point to some games that came out last year and be like, oh, go stop getting on them so hard. Blah, blah, blah. Like fucking uh, Psychonauts <laughs> 2 and, and Halo Infinite came out. And it's like, okay, it's no offense to Psychonauts 2, but that that's like a that's like a basically an indie level game. Like it, it's not like a fucking triple A game for 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 xbox you know that's not a system mover halo infinite is but that game was a huge like to be frank like it it just didn't have enough content there at launch to justify its release at the time and it still doesn't like even now they are struggling like with content release and the campaign from everything i've heard is pretty good but it's not like fucking world ending like it wasn't like it, it's it's not it didn't light the world on fire. So that to be honest, that is that's a game that was a disappointment overall. Yeah. So yeah, I just I don't I don't I like they're they're not they're not hitting it right now like with with their, with their big games and and I mean I'm sure some people would argue Sony's the same case, but like dude, honestly, Horizon while it got overshadowed by Elden Ring, it's still a fucking great game, really well made game, you know. Uh, Gran yeah. Turismo uh gran turismo 7 is had its has had its little controversy but everyone nobody's saying it's a poorly made game you know like fuck all that fuck all that justin at least they released the fucking games yeah right right. (laughs) at least they released the fucking games bro yeah and we still have god of war ragnarok coming well supposedly later this year but like, you know, like when was the last like super big Xbox game that came? I mean, like you can say Halo Infinite, but I mean Halo releases. Yeah, but like, every that's time the, that's my thing. Out. You like if you put Halo Infinite side by side with most of Sony's first party releases, like they don't stack up. It doesn't stack up. You know. Yeah. That's kind of my point, I guess. You know, in terms of like quality and level of level of content quality and just overall like uh quality of the game like it, it doesn't stand up they don't it doesn't stand up to them and that's just At one all. game you know that's just one game dude like <laughs> the fuck so so yeah i mean like we've got ragnarok supposedly coming and then there's there might be another game we don't even know about that has been rumored that might be coming this summer too um at some point from sony as well so and they got a lot in the pipe right now that we don't know about which is uh exciting so like but they haven't told us about most of it that's the difference you know S- xbox like these are all rumors we hear with sony like xbox has literally shown us these games and then shown us nothing of them for years on end now you know um, well and, and so. you know xbox the reason why people don't trust xbox still is because xbox has a history of like canceling games so it's like yeah that's why I, I don't get excited when I see these games. I I I want to see a date next to them. Like mm-hmm. out of all the companies to do this, Xbox needs to do this. They need to show like dates. They need to show gameplay footage because you have tarnished your reputation of canceling games all the fucking time. Like yeah. even Pray for Dark, I think, is getting canceled. Or I think that's a, I think that's a severe possibility. With yeah, game. so it's like Yeah. I don't know, man. Like they just need to step it up. Like we've been giving them praise. They're they're doing wonders on the customer end, yeah, of things. But like now we need you got you guys to step back into development mode, you know. So and yeah. Sony's killing y'all on that front. They're, and they have way more have development no... power than Sony does. So <laughs> there's no excuse, you know. Exactly. Like you can do all the good services you want, but at the end of the day, 
It's the games that matter. And people, including myself, are going to continue to go to Sony PlayStation because they have games, bro. And I want to play good games. And you're not, like, your Game Pass is a good deal and everything like that. But I'm still going to go to Sony because they have games, bro. I need games. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is with that. All right. Well, we will be covering this event for sure. So we'll we'll see if we get our Starfield gameplay or not. Uh, you'll see very quickly how angry I am at the beginning of the episode, and uh, <laughs> that'll probably tell you all you need to know. All right, let's move on, Montreal, to our favorite segment of the month. Every month, MPD numbers for March. <laughs> uh, so March, man, I was really surprised to see these numbers, dude. Uh, I'm actually really proud of March. March was a good month for gaming. I'm I'm really proud of y'all gamers, man. I'm yeah, really but proud. like, dude. I'm surprised because of how many bangers actually came out in March, right? Like that the numbers will look like this. So let me go over the numbers first and then we'll discuss. So March 2022 total video game sales were 4.853 billion versus 5.688 billion last year. So that is a minus 15% 15. change minus 15% for total game sales for the month. We've never seen that big of a drop um, in one month uh, since we've been doing this. So uh, video game content, physical, digital, full game sales. This is microtransactions, DLC, subscriptions, 4.112 billion versus 4.712 billion last year. That is a minus 13% change. Video game hardware sales, 515 million versus 680 million last year. That is a minus 24% change in video game accessories. 227 million this year versus 296 million last year. That is a minus 23% difference. Um, and they actually put first quarter numbers in here. Uh, I'm not going to read them off uh, fully, but I will say uh, video game sales, total sales are down 8%. Uh, video game content down 7%. Hardware down 15%. And uh, accessories down 16% uh, year over year, which that big numbers, dude. It's interesting. Uh, the COVID bump that we've had the last couple of years uh, seems to be over and something's going on where we're game inflation, bro. <laughs> maybe dude, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But the inflation hasn't affected gaming though. Really? Right. Like prices I, I aren't like raising are... in, in the, in the game space per se. Yeah. But they're raising everywhere else. And I feel like people are putting their money more towards everything else now than True. the games. Dude, I got I mean, a back um, out. We're, I got a back outside now and everything. Yeah, I, I got a burrito at Chipotle delivered to the my office on. Uh, oh my! I don't even DoorDash anymore. No, 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 dude, 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 no, no. This is to illustrate your point, though. I got a burrito <laughs> delivered with with uh, Chipotle on Monday to the office because I couldn't afford to leave the building. Like, but I needed to eat something. Um, mm -hmm. so it was fucking twenty dollars. <laughs> yep. Just the burrito to get delivered twenty fucking dollars dude like that is insane so to your point those kind of pressures may be hurting people's um spending kind of cash they have on hand to spend and they may be having to kind of tighten the purse strings a little bit around their hobbies you know um and that might be part of the differences we're seeing here but it could also be that you know covid's not over but people are treating it like it's over in the u.s and uh they're going out now rather than staying in <laughs> you know and yeah. buying less games as a result so we'll keep monitoring this uh any other thoughts on that before i read the top 20 Montreal? Nope. Nope, nope nope all right top 20 best-selling games for the month march 2022 elden ring stayed at number one for the month obviously that... no bro no, no 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 fuck obviously that's insane <laughs> Like, can I just say that? Like that, this isn't like with the number of new games on this list that are good fucking games. Like Elden Ring <laughs> outsold them all <laughs> in its second month on release. Games don't do that, dude. Like, oh wait, yeah, you said your second month. This is the second month. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Elden Ring okay. came out in February, dude. <laughs> February. It's fucking nuts. So yeah, this game is selling like fucking crazy right now. I, I I'm gonna be interested to see. When Namco Bandai tells us that it sold like 20 million or 25 million, because uh, I, I feel like that's coming uh, for sure. So, number two, Gran Turismo 7 
which is a new release from Sony. Gran Turismo is a big ass franchise, and Elden Ring still outsold it. <laughs> That's just nuts. Number three, though, this is even more wild. I can't believe this one. Kirby and the Forgotten Land, number three. Uh, number four, so, and will be the so, show twenty two. So, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So one thing on Kirby and Forgotten Land, uh, the first week it launched, I think that weekend it sold over three hundred thousand copies in Japan alone, bro. What? In Japan? I, dude, those yeah, are huge man. numbers in Japan. Wow. Well, dude, you know the other fucked up thing about this? Doesn't include digital being number three here. It's okay, I'm sorry. Physical. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the first week, I'm sorry, in Japan, it sold over 100,000 units. Okay. And it's That's first still week big in numbers Japan. for Japan. That's still big numbers, though. Yeah, Japan's not wait, a big wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm oh getting conflicting Montreal, numbers. Give me, give me, you, you, third time's the charm. Three strikes, you're out. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Fatak, fin, Fam, Matsu. How you pronounce it? Famitsu. Fam, Matsu. Famitsu. A uh, monthly physical sales chart showing that the Pink Puff latest Switch outsold 380,000 units its first two days. Holy shit, dude. By That's comparison a- with its last entry, uh, Kirby uh, Star Allies, which showed, what the fuck, 224,000 in its first three days. Wow, Kirby really sells. Why is Kirby the, the big, dude? What, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> What? What? <laughs> Kirby's bigger than like Metroid. Like what? That was two days. It sold three hundred eighty thousand units what? in the first two days, dude. That's like, I don't know how that compares to like Pokemon, but what? Kirby? Somebody... Yeah, this is all. This is all in Japan, by the way. Yeah, this that's is what all I'm saying. Japan. That dude. That's three hundred eighty thousand in Japan is humongous. Yeah, so I was right the first time. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Hold on. I gotta like I gotta see if I can find uh unit sales in Okay. Okay, so so I don't know how true this is, but Pokemon Legends Ar- Arceus sold one point four million in its first week in Japan. Okay. That that makes sense. So that um, puts it in I context, could, I guess. Yeah, I wish we can see the. But this was two days, right? This was Kirby sold that in two days, three hundred eighty thousand in two days. Yeah, so it could be half that number, maybe by by the time we get to a week. Yeah, that's Which still is. insane, bro. Three hundred eighty. Well, that's what I'm saying. Third, dude, it sold more than MLB the Show. <laughs> In Japan alone, man. That's no, crazy. no. I mean, like, this is in the U.S. These these numbers, but oh, okay, okay. Like, but MLB the Show. That's a big game, you know. In Horizon, bro. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> fu- like, what the fuck, dude? Kirby. Wow. Okay. Kirby's popular, I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, continuing on. Number five, Horizon Forbidden West. Number six, Pokemon Legends Arceus. <sighs> Number seven, WWE 2K22. Number eight, Mario Kart 8. I mean, come on. What the? Like, guys. <laughs> like, like, what the what the fuck, dude? Like, why are you still spot? Who is left to buy Mario Kart 8? <laughs> Who is left? <laughs> I just, like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. This is like an eight-year-old game, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I don't get it either, but it's, it's fucking, <laughs> so fucking funny. <laughs> every NTD number we go through. Every these. month. <laughs> every month. <laughs> it doesn't end. Like, <laughs> dude, I just, like, I, I don't. I mean, okay, wasn't this the month they released the DLC though, the tr- new tracks? Maybe that's it. I guess. Justin, I it's it, this is common. Why even try now. to explain I, it anymore? I, I, <laughs> like, what am I doing? What what am I doing? There's no reason. There's nothing to explain. It's always here. It's just the. It's always going to be there. We just have to accept it. It's going <laughs> to be a staple. Ten years from like, now, ten years from now, Mario Kart Eight still on the list. 
Yeah. We have to accept it. Like, we got to accept it. Like, Call of Duty, it used to be Madden. Oh, no, Madden's there, too. So, yeah, Call of Duty, Madden, and Mario Kart. Those are going to well, be Well, it staples. used to be, like, GTA, Minecraft. Well, actually, Minecraft's here, too. <laughs> but, like, yeah, GTA <laughs> 5 would be on here, like, every fucking month. Like, I just, okay. All right, we're getting sidetracked. Number nine, yeah. Call of Duty Vanguard. Number 10, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. Woo. Number 11, which actually outsold number 11, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. And wow. number 12, Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, number 13, FIFA 22. Number 14, Minecraft. Number 15, Madden NFL 22. Number 16, you, you, Tribe Strategy. Let's go. Woo. Number 17, Mario Party Superstars. Number 18, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Number 19, Animal Crossing New Horizons. And number 20, Assassin's Creed. Valhalla. This is a highly. Who the fuck is still buying that game? That's what I'm mad about. I know. It's like a year and a half. (laughs) Like after it came out. (laughs) Fucking Ubisoft, dude. Like, um, but dude, I I find this list like highly fascinating, to be honest. There's like layers to this, right? Like Stranger of Paradise outsold Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which this doesn't include digital for Tiny Tina. So that might be why. Um, If it did, it would probably overtake. Uh, Stranger Paradise, but still impressive nonetheless. And Ghostwire being as high as it is, 12 on here is a big surprise because Sony fucking just like shit that game out, you know, for the most part. Yep. Like Microsoft and Bethesda that- haven't talked about this game ever, basically, since since the acquisition. So Yeah, I heard nothing but positive things about the game too. Same. Yeah. Everybody seems to like it. Uh, triangle strategy being in the top 22 is nice as well. So that is positive for me. Um, encouraging for sure. But Mario Kart 8, everybody calm down. Okay. Mario Kart 8. I don't even want it. Like, dude, Montreal. Can we just talk about this real quick? When they announce Mario Kart 9, do you think They're the internet, do you think the internet will cave in on itself? They're not going to do a Mario Kart 9. Bro. You don't think so, right? No. I just think they're just going to continue it. Yeah, Mario Kart Eight is gonna be, yeah, that this is their live service game. Like they're probably gonna add summits at some point or some shit. Like I'm surprised they didn't add summits yet. Mm-hmm. Like they're probably gonna, it's gonna be the Super Smash Brothers of Kart's games. Of like, kart races, like yeah, yeah. So I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. Well, they have. Isn't isn't Lincoln in Mario Kart? Yeah, Link's Link's in Mario Kart. Yeah, what does he drive? Like a wooden, you know? I think he drives that uh, that motorcycle you drive in in the fucking. Uh, Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wild. yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, um uh just to go through it real quick, best selling games of the year so far. Um <clears throat> Elden Ring number one, Pokemon Legends number two, Horizon for- Forbidden West number three, Gran Turismo Gran Turismo seven, number four, number five is Call of Duty Vanguard, number six, Madden NFL twenty two, number seven, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, number eight, Mario Kart eight, number nine, Dying Light Two. Wait a second. No, sorry. I, I'm sorry that I keep getting stuck on Mario Kart 8, but this went from Mario Kart 8 was the 11th best selling game of the year <laughs> last oh month. Oh my God. Just and it went it up three spots. <laughs> <laughs> it went up three spots. Like, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay, number nine, Dying Light 2, Stay Human. Number 10, FIFA 22. Number 11, MLB The Show 22. Number 12, Monster Hunter Rise. Number 13, Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Number 14, uh, Minecraft. Number 15, Mario Party Superstars. Number 16, God of War 2018. Number 17, Total War, Warhammer 3. Number 18, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Number 19, WWE 2K22. And number 20, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Okay, I think I figured out the mystery. With Mario Kart, there is yeah, there is a bundle when you mm-hmm. buy a Switch, you get Mario Kart. Oh, uh, okay. You think that's that could part of be it? it? I think that's part of it. I think when people are buying the bundles, they're you you can get the bundles. It's no, a my, lot you know more what? Expensive. No, no, no. Let's stop, 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 <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Let's just stop trying to rationalize it. Okay, it is what it is. Like the game's selling like fucking crazy. Like it just <laughs> okay. I'll just tell you, man. <laughs> fucking hate this game (laughs) (laughs) fucking hate mario kart dude like what the fuck just like what's it gonna be at next month you know like i'm 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 really scared for like 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 june you know i wouldn't be surprised at the end of the light site life cycle for the switch that the mario kart sales um would amount to how many switch like 
almost kind of day and date with like the switch sales. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised with that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause la- last time we heard Mario Kart 8 is sold over 51.8 million copies. That is fucking insane. Nintendo <clears throat> is really making money, bro. Like they're so quiet though. Hand over like, fist. That is a silent giant. That is insane. Yeah, dude. And we thought they were gonna die. Remember, we thought they I were don't gonna remember die? that. <laughs> remember that? Like before the Switch came out, we were all like, "Man, if the Switch doesn't do well, they're gonna make games for PlayStation." And all the all the people online who were like, "Man, why do they even make consoles? They should just put Mario on Xbox and PlayStation." Like, nah, bro. Shut the like fucking god. We were all wrong, okay? So Yeah, they definitely came back hard. They dominating. Like, They're dominating, dude. So all right, Macho, let's move on. <clears throat> we got a couple more stories here before we re- we are done for the day. So Splatoon 3. A game Montreal and I couldn't be more ambivalent about. Uh <laughs> is coming out on September 9th. And the only reason I put this on the news, I normally wouldn't talk about this, but in the context of Xenoblade Chronicles getting moved, this was the that game's original release date. So they moved Splatoon 3 here and moved God. Xenoblade out of it, out of the spot. So it is an interesting thing to note. So they didn't they either didn't think this game would be ready or they wanted to release Splatoon 3 sooner and had to push it back. One of the two of those. So uh, I think this game's popular in Japan. So it makes sense. And it's a competitive game, and I think you can play on local. Mm-hmm. So just from Japan's point of view, yeah, a lot of people will be playing this in school. A lot of the kids will be playing this in school. So I guess this 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 makes sense. All right, Macho. You know, uh, as a, another podcast I listen to likes to do uh, the Around the NFL podcast, they do this thing called sandwich props, right? Where they they basically they put a statement out there, and then uh, other people on the show can take it if they agree if they uh, disagree with it, and mm-hmm. they'll get a sam- they'll get a quote sandwich out of it if they win. So, my prop to you, Mario Kart 8 will outsell Splatoon 3 on its release month. <laughs> oh, thanks. You okay, that's... Oh, man. I'm being cynical. I, I, I don't really think that, but it would be really funny. I mean, come on, think you know about what? it. Splatoon yeah, is not you know that what? popular, dude. Like, oh man, I'm so glad we're not super popular because we would get destroyed right there. I'm just, I'm, I'm guys, like they have a very, they have a very re- weird okay. fan base. Their fan I'm base not is saying the game is bad. I'm saying it's not popular. There's a difference. No, yeah, you're right. Like, I don't like the game, but like, yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah. Every time Splatoon 3 comes up, I'm just like a snooze face for me. I'm like, ugh, going to sleep. Thanks. Well, he comes out, he, the, the fucking director comes out in like a lab costume wearing like a construction hat or some fucking weird <laughs> shit, you know? Because they're, so. they're, they're investigating the, the squids or whatever the fuck they're called. The, inky, like the squid inkies kids. or whatever they are. Yeah. yeah. They- <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, whatever. Okay, enough for this game, man. Right. At least they, I mean, you didn't answer though. September. You didn't answer. You, you, th- you oh, think? Oh, uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Okay, so you're not. Gonna I actually, think, I know you're being cynical, but I, 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 I agree with you because I don't, I don't, I think it's gonna be like number fifteen or something like that. Okay. Better than triangle strategy. Yeah, I can see that. Makes sense. All right, let's move on, Montreal. Uh, this is probably a game you care more about. <laughs> so, Sonic Origins. Is uh, got a release date, uh, and it is coming out on June twenty third uh, this year, twenty twenty two. And it this so this is going to be uh, a huge collection of five Sonic the Hedgehog games, but they are not just re releasing them. Uh, this looks like more of a Mega Man Legacy Collection style um, collection where they are basically going to be touching the games up like remastering them in some ways, changing them and also having all sorts of extra content in them in, in this like art and stuff that you can unlock and, and all sorts of things like that. But the other thing 
They're also putting the original incarnations of the games on this as well. So you can play them in their original form or this like semi remastered form um, as well. So uh, do you find this uh, intriguing? Man, I'm so glad we're not popular because no, I don't. Wow. Okay. I'm so tired of 2D Sonic, bro. Really? Give me something new. Okay. I'm so tired of it, bro. I, I literally have all of them. Like they re-released all the games on Xbox, yes. yes, on the marketplace a long time ago. And you know what? Maybe this is for people who don't have Xbox, but I have Xbox and I have backwards compatibility. I I can just play them. <laughs> like I can just go and play them. I don't need this collection. Well, that like, was actually, from what I understand, was like kind of a semi-controversy with this. Is that yeah, people were were annoyed because they did just re-release the games like a la carte. I think a year or two ago. Yeah. Um, and they're yeah. like, why are you double dipping? on re-releasing these sonic games you know Um, and 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 i don't i don't need another 2d sonic game after i had sonic mania i think sonic mania was like the perfect 2d sonic game you Mm -hmm. can't get better than that honestly yeah Yeah. so uh, i mean but then again mario does the same shit so they're taking the page out of mario's book true learning from the nintendo Yep. The ones who, well, man, they didn't really kill Sega's consoles. No, Sega killed themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I put it more on Sony probably, but uh, no, you're right. Yeah, it was probably Sega themselves. So, All right, let's move on to our final story. Uh, Digimon Survive, which is a uh, tactical RPG in the Digimon oh, no. universe. This game. Oh, no. Yeah, you didn't see this, did you? The headline? The sub, the sub, yeah, sub, did, sub line. The sub headline. Yeah, yeah. So this game has finally gotten a release date. This game was <laughs> has been in development for a while, and I, Montreal had mentioned it before that you know it, it kind of was in kind of seems like it might have been in development hell. Um, but it's got a release date now. It is coming out on July 29th, which is the same day as Xenoblade Chronicles Three. Montreal, what are you going to do? I'm not buying this game. I'll tell you that. <laughs> It's in the Chronicles 3. This is Man. this is so unfortunate. Oh no. It's Whose crazy. idea was this? I know. Oh my god. Namco just doesn't give a fuck. What the fuck, man? Yeah. This actually looks oh kind of interesting though. Can you show me some gameplay? Tactical, they do have gameplay. Yeah, they, they do have gameplay. Of, let's see. Let's yeah. see. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh. I mean, I'm not going to buy this over Xenoblade for sure, but I don't know. It's kind of got like a like a, a visual novel type presentation as well. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Maybe I'll check it out at some point later in the year. But um, I mean, so, yeah, you were talking about this with me pre-show. Like you're not are you not like super into this game? Um, I know no. you, I know there's some Digimon games that you really like, so. Yeah, I'm not really into this one, unfortunately. Um, okay. But I do support, like, when the Digimon game comes out, I'll buy the game because I just want the the franchise good to get better. But mm-hmm. I'm holding a pipe dream. It's a, it's a pipe dream. Yeah. <laughs> it can't compare to, like, Pokemon or anything like that. So. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, might be worth checking out, though. So uh, this is uh, breaking news. I just saw this on the on Polygon <laughs> when I was, like, scrolling down. Uh, Blizzard announced today that they will be revealing their <laughs> Warcraft mobile game. Yeah, I put it actually in the Zencaster chat. Do you see that? Oh, did you? Okay, you saw yeah. it too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Here we go. All right, mobile mobile game time. They're feeling they're feeling bold. They put oh, a release man. date on Diablo Immortal, and now they're gonna kill Warcraft. <laughs> when is Starcraft next? I mean, StarCraft's already dead, bro. StarCraft been dead. They killed that years ago. Yeah, I didn't even think about StarCraft. I don't know why I mentioned that shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why you're talking about that. Diablo's the only, you know, well, Overwatch, actually. <laughs> so, I, <clears throat> have you seen any Overwatch 2 gameplay? I, I wanted bro, to bring this I've, up, too. I've literally blocked every Overwatch 2 bro, shit. I watched a little bit of it earlier this week. Uh, it it looks just like Overwatch 1, right? Bro. No, no, like the streamers playing it all said the same thing. Like it literally is just Overwatch 1 with like a new map and one new character. Like <laughs> like what 
dude, it literally has all the maps from Overwatch One and all the characters from Overwatch One. And the game looks exactly the same. Like, what are they doing over there? Like, what what is happening over there at Blizzard? Like, I'm 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 like lost. I I can't believe that. You know, I guess so, I can, so, but how, how long we got? You, can you stay at like at least another more twenty minutes? Yeah, 20 let, more let's minutes? do it, man. No, Fifteen twenty minutes. Let's give All the right. people. Let's give the people what they want. You All know? right, man. A nice long two hour show. I, I consider us both of us pretty open minded people. Um, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna ask this question. Yeah, I'm gonna give you my conspiracy theory. I tweeted it out earlier today, but I've been thinking this. For so fucking long, and I've been so scared to say it, but mm-hmm. I'm surprised I didn't get a lot of blowback. A lot of people actually agree with me. Um, but this started because I was having a, like sometime before you guys jump into the Discord, I talked to Jet and everything. And we, <clears> both <throat> of us are Star Trek fans and everything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we talk about like you know old Star Trek compared to new ones, and mm-hmm. talk about old Star Wars compared to new ones, and blah 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 blah. Anyway. I have I never told him this theory, but I have a running theory that I think is really true. Mm-hmm. I think because I'm looking at Battlefield Five, I'm looking at like Andromeda, I'm looking at uh, some of the newer Star Trek shows, mm-hmm. um, Star Wars, some of the newer Star Wars movies, mm-hmm. uh, mainline Star Wars movies. Yeah, I think Hollywood or the media in general. It are are making bad content and bad writing mm-hmm. and they're putting diversity over it yeah. so that when you hear diversity and like content yeah. you automatically think it's bad they're purposely doing it huh. so that they so that the viewer can be like maybe i don't need diversity maybe i do just need a bunch of white characters mm-hmm. that you know whatever you know, I don't need this anymore because we tried it and, and all the content was fucking ass. Mm-hmm. That that that's that's. Well, my so theory. do you think this is? So you, are you saying that the writers are doing this subtly, in order? The to companies push... themselves are are doing this subtly. They okay. they they're purposely hiring bad well, writers. To, to what pur- to what purpose then? Like what what? Why would they want people to think like? Com- why would they want people to associate diversity with bad content? So you can get, the, so they can get off their back and be like, "Hey, see, we tried, guys. We tried. We tried with the Star Wars franchise. We tried to have a, a lady female character lead, and it was bad. You guys hated it. You know, <laughs> so now we're gonna try something else. You, we we try um, with Andromeda, right? We try to have mm-hmm. every sexuality in there or every um, you know, identity in there and everything of that nature. And we tried, guys. Remember, we tried with the drama. To look, okay. look, we tried it. So another question then on okay like, on this theory. So okay, let's say that's true that they're trying to do that. Are they mm-hmm. are they doing that because they think uh that, like is is this like a like a prejudice angle? Like they just want they don't want to push diversity, or is this is this is I, this more I, of a that, profit driven angle? And, and that's what that's where I'm that's why I'm talking to you about it because mm-hmm. I I don't fucking know but that's just my theory okay. like because every time I think diversity I think oh the game's about to be fucking bad yeah and well, I'm a black when person writer, when writers <laughs> start, when writers start talking about it well so I think it, so I think it's because like you you think about yeah. you think about I'm sorry not to cut you off but you think about Battlefield Five right mm-hmm. and the shit they did with that game yeah. That would have been cool if they had to wrote the game in like an alternate reality, but yeah. they kept it in our reality. And yeah. it, and they, I think they purposely made the game hmm. bad. Like it not because Battlefield, their their single campaigns doesn't really, they really don't have um, good writing anyway. But the gameplay itself, when it first came out, was just fucking bad. Yeah, and but people, some, people are always like. And then even Battlefield 20, 2042, their whole cast, their uh, operators are like a, a, a diverse cast, but the game is bad. But then you go back to like Battlefield like 2 mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Like, mm-hmm. and I think like only one of the characters, they don't have any female characters. I think one of the um, uh, classes are black and, and that's it or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And, but they have an Asian faction, they have a Russian faction, they have an American faction. The American faction is more diverse they have, i think they have like a you know a uh, latino gunner or whatever like a, a, a white sniper and like a black uh guy but they have no females mm-hmm. no women mm-hmm. so um 
so I guess Battlefield is a little bit different in that in that aspect, but like, yeah, like that's my theory though. Like, tell me. So okay, so this is what I think. I well, well, I think what you're saying is possible. I think the more likely explanation <clears throat> is that we're we're both approaching, we're heading towards our mid thirties right now. You know, both of us. Yeah. So we're not super young anymore, and there is a generation of people that are in their early 20s um and even our generation to be frank also uh people our age and younger that are very um focused on a certain political angle to um social issues right yeah (laughs) they're very much pushing diversity and everything diversity for diversity's sake all this stuff I think it's more likely that these people are starting to proliferate around these creative industries and they are getting more influence um, in these spaces and they don't know how to write a good story while also having diversity. They're shoehorning in their belief structure into these properties and it's not Mm -hmm. working. Like that's my, that's prob that's more what I think is probably happening. It's it's okay. more inexperience and clouded judgment from what they're tr- what agenda they're trying to push, and it, it's resulting in poorly made products. You know, that's more what I think is probably happening. But yeah, uh, and, and, and you know what? One game that really goes against that theory. I know a lot of people will disagree with me on this. A mm-hmm. lot of people actually. Last of Us Two, you can have a character. A fe- two women, two female characters, both leads. You know, both leads, both beat the status quo. Of what a, a female lead should look like. We got a buff woman who's obviously straight, right? Yeah. Or uh, she's portrayed as straight, and then we have like you know a skinny little more you know, tomboyish, <laughs> yeah, more tomboyish girl who's who's lesbian, and they have lesbian relationships, and they even have kids in the game. But the game is written in such a way. And the gameplay is actually phenomenal. Like we can't deny that shit at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but the game is written and is played in such a way where you're like, "Holy fuck, this is this is some good shit." Like that's how you do good writing, right? Yeah. Like, but right. I even take it back as far as like Mass Effect and uh, Mass Effect Three. You remember how shoehornish the car? What's his name? Carlos, your uh, your pilot. Oh yeah, yeah. You remember how shoehorned the the gay sex scene was? Because I, I did it on one of my shepherds, right? Yeah, and it was so like forced. I was like, Ugh, I don't know about well, this. And, one. and every <laughs> time he every time he talks about himself, he he mentions his husband. Like every conversation exactly. you have with him, like yeah, it's 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 like a huge part of his identity. Like they 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 force it to the point that it feels like him being gay is the character. Like it's like yes, oh, this is the gay character. It's like. <laughs> that's not the way you want to write a character, you know, like it, it doesn't come yeah. off well. But then in, in the same sense, in that same game, I didn't know Vargas. Uh, I think that's his name. Uh, yeah. I didn't know he was bisexual. Yeah. Until like one day he, he hit on me and stuff like that, you know, and I was talking to him and he hit on me and I was like, oh shit, he's bisexual. You can sleep with that dude. Yeah. So it's like, but he didn't make that his his personality. It just so happened he beat the status quo of what a, what you think a bisexual dude should look like, right? Yeah, but that yeah. was good writing, in my opinion. They wrote that character really good. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I, I and then you have a pansexual who is Jack, right? Who was like who was yeah. sleep with anything under the fucking sun. <laughs> but they didn't. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't write her like that. They just wrote. The way Jack's mannerism is, you can see like, oh, I understand why she's pansexual because she just like, that's just who she fucking is. Like, it's not who she is. It's just so what she happens to be, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Like, her character just doesn't give a fuck. And who she loves, who she loves. Or she likes what she likes or whatever. She does what she wants to fucking do. But she has a very, like, casual view of sex, too. Right? Exactly. It's, it's a very casual thing to her. It's not like a, you know, Super thing. intimate, right? Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that was before. I hate saying like the woke wave or whatever because that sounds so fucking the red woke pillish. Woke wave. That's yeah. A... <laughs> yeah, it sounds so fucking red pillish, yo. I hate That's that funny, shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess before Gamergate, we can say that. 
um that's be that's kind of like that kind of happened before gamergate came out um and i feel like writing really changed after that that's somebody needs to write a fucking documentary on that shit because gamergate changed a lot of shit in good and bad ways um but um i think that's where everybody came out of the woodwork on both sides of the spectrum dude yeah where everything was kind of laid bare this stuff had been hiding under the surface for a long time before gamergate and then gamergate happened over the course of fucking like years basically and yeah. it, it it kind of exposed the political spectrum of the industry and all of a sudden we all realized that the games media is like hyper left right yeah and cuz i don't know i mean games were i guess it wasn't happening fast enough for people but i feel like games are slowly progressing to where like yeah. You know, we were having different color main characters. They weren't just all white dudes, and you know, they're you know they were you know they were it was progressing in a way. Um, but then you get other things, right, where people would get upset, like Buzz Lightyear, for instance, right, the movie, right. Uh, they have a black character in there, and everyone's upset that there's a black character in there, and it's like, why? Okay, yeah, why? So it's like. And and that's what I'm talking about where we think, like, I'm pretty sure that I have no no doubt in my mind. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I have no doubt in my mind that the way that character is written, she's not going to be blurting out, I'm a black woman, I'm a black woman, I'm a black woman. She's going to be written just as a character in the fucking movie, yeah, right? right? But we think, we see diversity, or a lot of people, not we, but a lot of people, um, I don't want to say weak-minded people, but people that are heavily influenced by, like, the media itself, they see diversity and they automatically think bad because we have gotten so many bad things in the name of diversity. Yeah. If you see what I'm saying? I think it's, an, so I don't think it's intentional. I just think it's an unfortunate byproduct of, of change happening in, in the, like the types of people that are writing these, these stories. Yeah. Um, and it is an unfortunate byproduct because you're right. It is now becoming a really obnoxious where you see a black person in a Lord of the Rings show and the internet loses its mind. Like <laughs> a group of people who are really upset that there's a black guy in a Lord of the Rings show. And it goes, we talked about this on the show. I think when that happened, like, like yeah. why, why, why is, why is the fantasy genre so racist? Like, cause it is like it literally like you like <laughs> think of how many fantasy stories actually have black characters in them. And then th- then tell them, like, try to think of how many of those are like the, the black people in those stories aren't portrayed as some exotic, far, like, West or Eastern fucking people, you know? The, like, yeah. the, the, like, like, think about like Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, Witcher. They're all like that. They're all like from a different land where they wear turbans and they're all fucking like they live <laughs> Elder, in the desert. Uh, like uh, every Elder time, Scrolls, the red coat. What are they called? The red coats? And yeah. The, uh, Elder yeah. Scrolls. What are they called? Yeah. Something, something like that. <laughs> I don't. I red don't guards. Know. Red yeah. guards. That's what they call. Uh, yeah. Elder I don't, I don't know. Elder but they wear turbans yeah. and just, they yeah. wear turbans. But, but how? Yeah. yeah. And it's like a trope <laughs> at this point. It's like a literal yeah. trope. So when Lord of the Rings has somebody. And it, it, like people are like, oh, it has to be portrayed in this very specific way to be realistic. And it's like, <laughs> it's Lord fucking, of the Rings, it's bro. It's fucking a fantasy world. It's made up. Who cares, dude? Like they can fucking pop out of the ground for all we care, for all I care. Like they can live underground. Like, like why do we have to explain this in a logical way that it is uniform to our world? So that's kind of the thing. Is I, I I like I I like I'm I'm framing it as a fortunate because that's what it is. I hate I hate the way people talk about this stuff now. It's like because <clears throat> diversity in these in these properties is good, but it needs to be written yep. well for it to be good. You know, because when yeah. it's not I, written well, it does a disservice to what you're trying to do. You know. So so on the flip side of that, right? So how we yeah. say. When people see diversity in bad in, in video games or certain medias and things of that nature, like when you see mm-hmm. a black elf or whatever, um, <clears throat> you know, people on the on the I don't want to say right hand side of the spectrum, but I'm just saying up in I'm just saying right and left, not political wise, but you know, just mm-hmm. common term speaking. Yeah. On the right hand side, you got people who are like, Oh my god, it's gonna be written bad, um, because there's diversity, there's this black character. Lord of the Rings is fucking ruined, right? Yeah. And then Say like on the left hand side, you got people like like me 
and I watched, I've been watching Star Trek my entire life, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then I, when Star Trek, uh, I think it's called Discovery, Discovery comes out, yeah. I don't really like the way the character's written. And people will say to me, oh, you don't like that character because she's a black woman. And I'm like, wait a minute now. The character's right. just written bad. That's just a poorly written character. I, yeah. I like the, the, the actress, you yeah. know? I like yeah. the character that they're making. I just think the character is written poorly. And like, I think people like can't separate. Like, the delivery's separate. not bad. The actress isn't doing a bad job. Like, exactly. everything else around it might be okay, but the like the things the character is doing in the show, in the context of the show, and the way they, what they say, like they they become a bad character, you know? Like, exactly. It's, it's like Ray in Star Wars, right? Yeah. People would tell you, if right. you say, if you say Ray is a bad main character for a Star Wars franchise and people are like, well, why? She has the best feats. She's stronger than Luke Skywalker now, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yes, on paper, she's stronger than Luke Skywalker. But she didn't. The way she's story written, didn't earn those things for her, though. Exactly. Like, you know? And it's like, what do you mean she didn't earn it? It's good. Oh, so she got it easy because she's a woman. That's what you're saying. It's like, no. I just think the character got it easy like, for the sake it of to Luke. Easy. Like compare it to Luke, right? Luke starts off not even knowing he's a Jedi. Same thing as Ray, right? Yeah. But the arcs are completely different. He doesn't become powerful until the third movie. You know, like. As an actor, Ray never before. failed in the movies. That's she what I'm saying. Failed. The first movie, Ray's going toe to toe with a trained Sith, like <laughs> who was wins. a former Jedi trained by a Jedi Master. Like, huh? Huh? She that good? Like, she's that good? Like, come on, dude. Like, she kind of yeah. clowns fucking like she kind of clowns uh Kylo, Kylo Ren too. Like. So I don't, I don't but, but see, and, that, and that's what I'm saying, right? Now, if you were to say that same thing online, yeah. people will smoke shredded. you. I get shredded. You get, yeah. sh- you get shredded because they'll, they'll, they'll call you sexist. Oh, and, you know, I'll get called sexist, but I'm a black dude. Yeah. You'll get, you get fucking fried because you're a white dude. Yeah. So <laughs> Straight white dude, yeah. I know. Yeah, it's a straight white dude. So you'll get fucking fried. So it's like. That's why I don't use Twitter. My opinion <laughs> my opinion's not welcome there. But see, and that's what I'm saying, right? Like, both sides of the spe- spectrum are super extreme to where it's people like me and you who are in the middle, and we're yeah. making They'll both like, logical... It doesn't matter, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're making logical fucking conclusions, and we're like... Yeah. And then that's where my conspiracy theory comes in, because I'm like, there has to be some... And maybe it is just an unfortunate coincidence. There is no big conspiracy theory, right? Um, I just say that to start the conversation, but like... Mm-hmm. I think it's a real unfortunate circumstance that needs to be talked about in the industry. Like everyone needs to talk about this. Right. Right. Well, so yeah, I think everything you're talking about goes to, to me, what we were talking about with Twitter earlier in the show, right? Yep. Is that we can't have discussions that are nuanced anymore. It's black or white. You're on one side of the fence or you're on the other. There is no middle middle ground. That is often, the way these arguments go on Twitter. And then it becomes a shouting match where you are exactly right. What you're talking about. Like if I expressed the opinion that I expressed earlier, I would have, I would have the people on the left calling me sexist, you know? But if I praised Ray in the next tweet, (laughs) I would have the people on the right coming after me. You're a fucking simp. You're (laughs) a fucking, yeah, you're a fucking identity politics simp, you know? Like, and, and that's the problem is that, Everybody, th- this is this is why I wish I want Twitter to be deleted from the universe because it's it's boiled our conversations down into these short bursts of 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 words, you know, and you can't fit nuance into even 280 characters. God forbid, 140 back in the day, you know, like I can't even re- I can't even imagine how we lived with Twitter for so long with 140. Like I don't like I fucking like it's fucking weird to think about that because that wasn't that long ago. But, um, uh, but yeah, it's like, like, dude, you, you can't, you can't fit a coherent argument. That's why when like Yuji Naka is trying to explain himself on Twitter, he has to write a 15 tweet thread, you know, 20 tweet fucking thread, you know, because he's trying to express something that takes pages and pages of text to explain the context of, you know, and that's the yeah. same for the way we talk about this stuff and analyze it. That's why I prefer talking to you on this podcast is because I can, 
I can expound on any point I make, right? And explain the context of why I'm thinking the way I'm thinking, you know? Exactly. I can't do that on Twitter. If I say something on Twitter, it's just a statement. Like, and I'm, it's always presented as fact, you know? It's like, if I say, uh, like, the best I can do is say, Ray uh, didn't earn her feats. She's a Mary Sue, you know, fucking, fucking protagonist. <laughs> and I think she's poorly written. And then, like, how else do you interpret that? as somebody that's reading it, you know, um, it's like, there, there's only a few ways to interpret that, you know, and, and, and the conclusion people are going to jump to is this guy is sexist, but I can't give context of saying, I don't care that she's female. I don't like, if she was male, I would feel the same way about her, you know, mm -hmm. like it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to the context of my point. Like Kylo, like I feel similarly about, he's a dude, like, He's presented it as a super powerful Sith Lord and he's kind of a bitch who's not very good actually. Like, you know, like it, and he is similarly a bad character for that reason, ultimately, you know, throughout yeah. the trilogy. So they're different contexts, but one's male, <clears throat> one's female. I feel similarly about both of them. You know, I think they're both not great characters, either one of them, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, but it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's, it's boiled down to such a small word count that you can't really inject any amount of thought into it. So you're not going to get any thought back as a result either. You're going to get somebody spitting their opinion and that's it. Like there's no discussion. There's very little back and forth that happens, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's just so weird. Like, I don't know, even when the lore includes diversity, like you remember when Finn, Removed his Star Wars, uh, his uh, Star Stormtrooper helmet, and the yeah. internet went fucking batshit crazy, saying there are yeah. no black stormtroopers. Yeah, and it's like, but you don't know the lore, bro. <laughs> like, you I don't know, know why right. they're well. That see, that's <laughs> the point, right? That's that, that that again. That goes back to the point. There's no nuance. They're like literally like these people are. That's this is like this is an example of like right wing people like fucking losing their mind over something like this, right? Is like they're they're so lost in their side of the political spectrum which again not everything needs to be about politics but they somehow managed exactly. to make it that way like yeah you you're, you're so lost in your side of the political spectrum you're so blinded by it that you're you you are a fan of this product and you don't know the lore that like the clones weren't haven't been a thing for fucking ever in star wars by that point you know like yeah so <laughs> It's like I, I usually like to like end these off on like solutions, like because we usually do that anyway when we have a problem with some, a game or right. whatever. Yeah. You know, like, and I think honestly, the solution is more discourse. Like, we have to get over this hump as a. That's what I'm saying. A, I I don't think we can do it as long as Twitter exists. I just like I don't I don't think we can. You know, like it. it, it I I I every day I go on there. This is the thing. I still go on there and scroll Twitter every once in a while and like scroll the timeline. Like I do it like once yeah. a day, maybe, you know, maybe twice a day, depending on the day. And, and I, I do it in the vain hope that something will be different today. You know, that it won't be people at each other's fucking throats about stuff. And, and I, I'm going to be honest, I can probably count on one hand, the number of days that I've come out and that has actually happened, you know? Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's just like a, it's a disrupt, it's a destructive platform that has a really eroded our ability as a species to communicate with each other. Um, and it's really like fucking disturbing to me. Um, because I'm like afraid to talk to people now. Like I, I'm, I'm I like, I, like, dude, I'm, I'm like afraid to interact with people online. Like I don't want to play games with people. I don't know because I, I, I just like th this whole this whole atmosphere that exists, it exists in games too. And, and honestly, it's like, <clears throat> I, I think I used to be when I was much younger, like 20 years ago and I was playing Warcraft three or world of Warcraft, I was excited to interact with people. Cause I, I you know, you'd learn, you'd, you'd, you'd be talking to somebody you like you for in, in learning experiences from somebody you've never interacted, like a kind of person you've never interacted with before. And I found that exciting. And now it's like, I'm just afraid I'm going to get vitriol for even existing in this space with, with somebody, you know, like with, without even doing anything other than trying to play a game, you know, 
Like it, mm-hmm. it happens all the time. And like this bleeds into the way we interact with each other on games too, is kind of what I'm getting at. Like, dude, like lost Ark, for instance, I have this weird anxiety with doing certain content in that game because um, I've been attacked in the game already, like up to this point where I went into a dungeon that I didn't know. I had watched the video, but I didn't, I hadn't done it before. And I fucked up a couple mechanics and people in the party are fucking mean to you, you know, like, and they don't, they have no patience for like even dealing with you. And it's like, like, dude, it's like, it's like created this anxiety in me that I don't even want to go do new content now because of those kind of experiences. I don't want to have that experience. You know, I just want to play the game and have fun. That's what I'm there to do. Um, and it's like, it's, it's like, it's like a hump. I am really struggling to get over personally. Um, I tried playing Dota a couple months ago and I had the same mental block, you know, in that game, I was afraid to play ladder in that game or even just public games because I hadn't played in months and or years. And I like suck now, you know, I'm like not good at the game anymore. So but my MMR is such that it's still placing me with people from back when I played and I'm not at that skill level, you know? So I'm like, just, yeah. I'm like making my team lose because I'm so bad, you know? Um, and I don't want to grind to figure out how to play again because I know I'm going to play 30, 40, 50, even probably hundred games where I lose every game and my team hates me, you know, because I'm not good enough at the game anymore you know, right now. And I, I'd have to like build my skill back up. And it's like, I don't want to deal with that playing the game. I just want to play the game, you know? And it's like really fucking depressing, dude. Like it, 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 it's, it, it's like made me really feel shitty. Like I, I like, I don't, I, that's why I keep trying to get you guys to play multiplayer games and stuff. Like I, that's why I want to play stuff with you, like different kinds of games, because I feel comfortable with you guys. Like we're not going to fucking get in each other's throats, you know, playing Dota or league or whatever well, the fuck we're playing, you know, well, but like the whole, the whole political spectrum has bled over into like video games and media yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, to where like, if I want to introduce you right to another yeah. group of my friends who play video games, play the same video games as me, I, I don't do that now. I separate all my <laughs> groups of video game yeah, friends because yeah. there may be certain political alignments that you may not agree with that they may, you know. We've had little bits t- of bleed over, right? Like like, yeah. like DJ comes on the Discord sometimes and, and uh, a couple of the other yeah, guys. And, and that's o- yeah, and that's okay, but I have other, you know, groups right. of friends that I play right. the video right. games with and stuff like that. And I don't mind, you know, ble- bleeding over, but it's just like I'm so conscious of that because there's such a... There's such a somebody says a the wrong thing. Yeah, and, you, and I have to, and then I have to choose a side. And yeah. It's gonna be like my choice. Right. You gotta choose a side, bro. Right. You know, you gotta choose a side, and it's like I you don't, don't even want to get in that situation, right? Exactly, exactly. Right. So I I keep everything separated, and uh, I, I I don't know if it's the media's fault. I don't know if it's just the climate, and it's like it's bleeding over into every fa- facet. But I just thought it was really interesting how even yeah. me. I recognize what's going on, like, with, you know, with bad writing and diversity and everything like that. And I'm like, man, every time, even sometime when I think I see a character, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Well, how they going to re- how they going to write this character to make this character super fucking powerful this time so that she can match or they can match, you know, the character of this person. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. And it's and then and, or we get the total opposite. Right. <laughs> we get we get fucking. There's no balance because we get fallen order again. We Cal, who's like the most boring generic Jedi ever, and we're oh like, bro, God, like, yeah. who, like, who somehow survives an encounter with Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like so it, there is no there is no balance, and then we get little games that I think are really, like I think Overwatch. I'm um, not Overwatch. Apex is one of those games where. Yeah, those characters have different personalities, and you know, if you look into their bio, you know, they're they're bisexual, they're straight, they're queer, some type of queer. But it really doesn't bleed over into the game, even in the story, right? It doesn't bleed over. It's actually very interesting. You're like, you know, certain things are happening, stuff like that. But then you get games like Overwatch, where I feel like it kind of doesn't really make any sense why all these characters are the way they are. So it's like. No, it's just there isn't there isn't the balance, and 
That's why I'm scared for games like, like you know, the next Dragon Age, the next Mass Effect, and all that stuff like that. Because I feel like they're gonna go back. They're gonna go so far back to like the generic Shepard that they're not gonna try to do anything different because they quote unquote tried to do something different with um with uh Andromeda. With Andromeda. But granted, yeah, which I is think- ironic though when you think about it because. Bioware's actually always been a like a diverse of, <laughs> of diversity in the industry because yeah I mean going back to Dragon Age one dude like had uh, had a gay character in the game and he was like his I, I don't remember his like he was honestly one of my favorite characters I remember talking to him and he was like dude he was fucking funny as hell and and like a really interesting person within the game world you know um, yeah like but they, he didn't make he didn't make. They didn't constantly throw like I. I think this is like this. It, it's like this in real life. When you meet a gay person, majority nine times out of ten, you don't even know that person gay until they come on and like, oh, like, hey, this is my boyfriend or hey, this is my girlfriend. You're like, oh, okay, well, whatever. Like, I don't even think nothing of it. And yeah. I know, like, maybe because this is the time that we're in, and maybe like fifteen years ago, right? You're like, whoa, bro, you're gay. Oh my god. It was yeah. like now is now in in we had to have these conversations so that we can get to the point that we are now to where mm-hmm. if I do meet somebody gay or something like that, or there's a gay character, I don't even think nothing of it. I'm like, all right, he's yeah. gay. I don't fucking care. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? Um, but I think the industry is still thinks we're not past that. And I think we are, I think a lot of people are, even a lot of people. Are I think right. the people who aren't are just like a really small minority. Who's really loud. Exactly. And th- exactly. this is why, dude, this is my point about Twitter. This is why I get, this is what I know you guys probably think it's annoying how much I like complain about it, but I, I really think it's like, it's, it's, it's I don't, like, there are many factors for why we are where we are as a, as a, as like a race of people. But I think Twitter is like at the center of all of the other factors, you know, um, because before Twitter came out, we didn't have an outlet that was so public for us to express ourselves, you know? And I think that's good for us <laughs> that we don't, that we didn't have that. I, I don't think Twitter is a positive force in, in human society. Like I, I really do not think it's positive in any way, shape or form. Like I, I don't think it's a good thing that any Joe Schmo can go on there and say whatever he wants. Um, I'm not saying that we need to censor people. That's not what I'm saying. No, I'm I, saying I, we're, I, we I'm saying we censor people by not having like you're not really censored. There's just no way for you to express yourself on the Internet the way you can on Twitter. Like, that's what I want. I want to go back to the time when we had like fucking forums and like really small, tight knit communities, you know, that discuss shit. I, I, I don't think it, it it just it creates more vitriol and hate than anything, you know, because I mean, maybe this is maybe it's not Twitter's fault, though. Maybe it's just humans like we can't. Like, I mean, there's I think, dozens think, and hundreds of stories about this over time that, like, we just can't coexist, you know? I, I think it was inevitable. And, yeah, um, I mean, not to be a Kojima stan or fanboy or whatever, but Metal Gear, you know, Solid 2 fucking predicted all this. Like, yeah. people would go off into their own little corners of the internet and, you know, cycle and regurgitate the same things where they think they're right all the time to where you know, something's going to happen to where Twitter happened. And now there's these huge wars on Twitter and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just coming from like the, like the, the black perspective, you know, of things, I think some shit, I I agree with you because Twitter is like the, I think, and this is, I know this is not like a black person. This is not like a black power podcast. But this shit set my people's back so so, so many years mm-hmm. because we have the same arguments mm-hmm. as far as like yeah. things that doesn't need to be discussed. In yeah, the you, open, you right? did expose me to something that I didn't really know about, obviously. Is yeah, I can't believe how much like infighting there is within <laughs> Like these, and I don't these think that should be public. About, yeah, yeah like I, exactly. That's yeah, yeah. right, right. And, and, yeah. and unfortunately, that platform has just expounded upon it to where it was actually weaponized in the elections. There were Russian accounts making fake black women accounts, being or mm-hmm. black fake black conservative accounts and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Like they were weaponizing that against us, and 
it's very sad. Uh, and I don't know how we can stop it because Twitter is right there. It's the most popular platform. And yeah. with with Facebook, there was no one. Uh, you can put the same shit up, but people knew who you are. If I said, you know, mm. go kill. No, this is this is an example. Like if I said, go kill all Asian people or something, people knew, oh, that's Montreal. Right? That's Montreal right there saying that shit. We know who he is. We can put a face to the picture, that to the status. That dude I went to high school with. <laughs> exactly. You know? But on Twitter, I can be a fucking Goku AV saying, kill all black people, and you don't know who the fuck I am. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm hiding yeah. behind the, the face yeah. of an- anonymity. So, and it, it kind of just bled over to like, to, and I know this conversation yeah. got way off from where we were starting at, but it kind of hey, all com- comes back yeah. into circle because it's like, I don't, I don't know where we go from here. Like, I just, I don't know where we go from here as yeah. a human I mean, race. Yeah. Little subgroups. Cause even like, there are certain, like, like, I didn't know there was like beef between certain Asian people. Like, I didn't know there was beef between certain, you know, Latino communities and stuff like that. Even white people like have certain things that, that I didn't know about. Like the whole, <laughs> like, I don't know if this was like exclusive to white people, but like a lot of people like, uh, or what they call quote unquote white Twitter, like, you know, I wash, do I wash my legs? You remember that? Like the washing my legs thing, like the bottom <laughs> of your legs thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a whole thing. Right. So it's like, yeah. there's certain shit I just didn't need to know. And I'm like, this is, I didn't need to know all this shit. Like y'all could have kept that over there. Uh, <laughs> It is certain shit about like my people, like other people didn't know, didn't yeah. need to know, and yeah. we could have kept that shit over here. Um, it, it's just exploded into like an un, unviable well, these cesspool. Things, I'm gonna be honest too; these things like create new stereotypes. You know, <laughs> exactly. I mean, they, they do. Like, like finding, learning these things that that we didn't know. Like, yeah, it's like it's not just like the fried chicken thing or with fucking with, with black people or like the. I don't like I don't I I don't want to think of any other or like Asian people can't drive or whatever the fuck you know yeah. like shit like that like that shit's been around forever right but yeah it's like we're gonna have like a whole new generation of stereotypes that that come out because of how much we know about each other now that we didn't before um, <laughs> and I, I like that's the problem is I don't think knowing the information that we didn't know is inherently bad it's just the way it gets presented on Twitter is so ugly yes. that yeah. it turns into, it turns into either something to laugh at or something to ridicule, you know? And that's not, po- that's a, those aren't positive forces, you know, out there. Yeah. So I'm, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I like, I'm, I, I kind of, I've become really apathetic towards this whole conversation as much as it's concerning to me. And it's been concerning to me for a long time. Um, I'm like you, I, I long ago kind of gave up. I don't, I don't know what to do about it. I mean, I guess the government could come in and force like regulate <laughs> that you, well, I mean, this is a thing. I know this is like really, that's like really authoritarian, like police state kind of stuff, but dude, I like, we're not well, mature I and mean, we're Britain's not mature. Already... No, we're not mature enough as people to like be on these sites. And honestly, like we're just we're just not, dude. Like I'm sorry if that if that's what's required to force people to be mature adults and treat each other with any modicum of fucking respect. Like I I don't I don't know what else to do, you know? Like I don't know. No, you're right. And unfortunately, the like, thing it, is, it bled yeah. over into like my favorite genres and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's even like anime fucking games yeah, like, like yeah i know i know like I know, man. It, I know. it bled over to all that to where like people i i want diversity i want well i want diverse i just want black people to be represented better in animes like we know yeah. how black people are represented in anime to where like no i was thinking doing, of the you know the guy from dragon ball that like <laughs> in general <laughs> you know who i'm talking that's about exactly it. who i was thinking about <laughs> in my head God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's to the point now where where people were asked for that and they're like, "Oh, you're ruining my anime." And it's like, "Bro, like I just like why can't I just be represented, you know, correctly yeah. or whatever?" Yeah. Uh I, I, it's it's just I I don't I don't know where we go from here. It's just I I really I hope that a lot of these next generation of writers and designers and everything like that. And I think I think The Last of Us kind of proved that last of us two rather yeah. kind of proved that um mm-hmm. 
And there are other handful of games too. Don't get me wrong that I just can't think of off the top of my head uh, that have diversity, but they're they're written very well. I think Horizon. Game. I think Horizon actually does a really good job with it too. To be to be honest, yeah, it, it was another indie game that just recently came out that was like story driven, and uh, it, it had like a diverse cast, but it was written very well. And I can't think of the name of the game off the top of my fucking head for to save my life. Mm. But uh, yeah, like the la- uh, Horizon. Um, and like even with the God of War, right? They're gonna have like they're showing you know black people and the God under the little girl and the God of War is black or whatever. Oh, and Kratos I didn't is, feel Kratos is is uh, his voice actor is black. His voice actor is a black guy too. Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't think like <clears throat> I think we're I think people are learning because I, I I really think like Andromeda was like the huge the biggest blunder because you look back like a year before that, right? Yeah. Or a year or two before that, um, In- Inquisition was praised, like because the writing was actually pretty decent, like it wasn't bad mm-hmm. at all, mm-hmm. and they had a diverse cast. Yeah. Um, whereas, like Andromeda, I don't know what the fuck happened. I just don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I man, think it was I an inexperienced team, dude. Like I, I really believe that. Like I think that's the simplest explanation, and that's usually the right one is the simplest explanation. Um. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think games are better, obviously, in a much better place than they were 15 years ago. With this oh, yeah, stuff. 100%. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, There's a lot more examples we can point to, and, and we're getting more and more every year, you know. Um, but it's I, – I, as much as it, is, as it is getting better, I think a lot of the discourse is not, and that's really where my problem – lies ultimately is is even if these things are written well right like the last of us too dude think about the the controversy around that game that the 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 fucking hate that happened around that game dude like people thought abby was trans and she wasn't like it turns out she wasn't and that was like part of the leaks and the leaks weren't even right like a lot of a lot of the leaks and this is another thing that's a problem with this stuff is people just believe the first thing they fucking read on twitter um, this happens with gaming all the time and it's really annoying. And in that case, it was really damaging to the game, um, un- unjustifiably as well. And even if it was true that she was, trans, I was able to say that who cares, it, true, it like, wouldn't have took away from the game because right. the way the game was written, the way the game was presented, like the shots they did, everything right. was like very detailed and on purpose, you know? Yeah. So, well, like even if um, she was trans. Yeah. Cause like, uh, Lev in the game is trans, right? and mm-hmm. it it's well written like it fits well with the game you know um and I, I think it worked like really well that character's really interesting too in that game so i just like i, I don't i don't know i think i think people like need to get politics out of their brain um it's way too central to most people's lives like guys like I'm going to be honest with you. Most of the stuff that happens in our government doesn't affect you on a day to day. Like it really doesn't matter that much. Um, Yes. Laws pass that affect us and affect others. But um, like, I don't know. I feel like you'd all be a lot happier if you paid less attention to this, to that stuff, like straight up. So. Yeah. I just, I feel like there's a time and a place to discuss stuff like this. There is. Um, it doesn't need to be constant. It doesn't need to be in everything we do. It doesn't need to be yeah, in everything I, we I, consume. I, you know. I, yeah. Sometimes I just I don't. <laughs> like it's like it's cool to play as a black character, but sometimes I don't really fucking care if I like when I played Stranger in Paradise, bro. I didn't care that Jack was white. I didn't fucking care. I liked Jack as a character. He was fucking crazy he went to kill chaos and that I mean, was his yeah, only seen a white goal. dude that's that insane is actually kind of <laughs> cool because they're usually not like exactly. <laughs> so you know i kind of appreciate we'll it just see we'll just see it a fucking manly ass character man like yeah, anime just games a man's just, man I, mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta play that game what am i doing dude i need a good laugh bro like dude just these like the whole i just love the cutscene where they're just resting and he's like oh when are we gonna stop killing these monsters and go kill chaos you know, like man, uh, I need it. I need that in my life. Like it's, it's he, beautiful. He just, yeah, he just has so many good moments. Like he's fighting really? a monster, and the monster's like, 
and you know he's doing his whole dialogue or whatever or his whole tribe and he's like and my name is he's like, oh go fuck who you are he tries to tackle him <laughs> during, his, during his like monologue i'm like dude what yeah. the fuck yeah yeah well there was like a was like, i remember there's a scene where he's talking to like the king of the dark elves or something and the, the guy's like <laughs> Hello, my name is. And I don't care. Just tell me where chaos is, you know, or something. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It is like it's the reason that's so cool to me though is because yeah. it's Final Fantasy, right? So we're used to like these little, you know, weeb like Sora type characters yeah. and all that yeah. shit like that. And we get yeah. fucking Jack, who's like, imagine Jack is a Keyblade Master. You're like, oh my <laughs> god, dude, give it to me, baby. Let's go. He could be in the next Kingdom Hearts, dude. Like. <laughs> he could be in it if they ever put Final Fantasy characters in those games again, you know? Um, yeah, oh no, dude, that would be awesome. Imagine. No, they'd have to. They'd have to. Have to, have to Jack. Shut the oh fuck up, Mickey. Shut the <laughs> fuck up, Mickey. Where's <laughs> Chaos? You know? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, but glad we had a discussion, though, man. I, yeah, I just man, need man. to get that out. No, nah, no, nah, you know it's good. It's a it's a deep conversation. Unfortunately, it's one that doesn't have an easy answer, and um, I don't know how we bridge bridge it, you know. But you know, maybe it's someday <laughs> we'll all grow up <laughs> and we can be adults <laughs> and talk about things in some kind of normal, nuanced way. But we'll see. All right, guys. Well, we've been going for a while, uh, two and a half hours almost, actually. So. Uh, that is going to be it for this week. So if you liked this episode, please like the episode, review the show, and subscribe to the show on whatever feed you are listening to it on. And please share it with your friends. If you'd like to interact with either of us on Twitter, you can do so at ITrap for the Hokage for Montreal. That is the number four, not the word. I'm at Thundernut01. And the show is at the Player's Take. If you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter or send us an email to the Player's Take01 at gmail.com. Uh, and that is it for us, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will see you next week.